There he is. Yes, dude. Keep gassing me up. Can the pimp me? on a blimp. There he is. <laughs> can you hear me, though? Uh, oh, yeah. Let me see. We can. Yeah, Welcome. We can. The Thank soothing you. mellow tones of Alex Stein's voice has graced us all this evening. Thank you so much. Oh, shut up, Rob. No, that was very nice. And I am actually working hard. I, I do work hard. You work hard, too. You were saying Andrew Wilson. He works hard. I don't see him doing the 24-hour stream. Are you uh, doing it? Yeah. No, uh, but I'm, I'm actually going to D.C. on Monday. Well, I'm actually waking up at 4 a.m. Um, Monday morning in Sky News, Australia, which I'm a contributor there. I'm uh, there. They have a uh, this guy, Paul Murray. They're doing his show from Dallas. So I got to wake up at 4 a.m., do their show because that's Australia time. It's like whatever in the morning. Um, and then I'm going to D.C. to go cover Kamala's rally. Uh, oh, you'll so you'll fit right in there. You know, well, I know. Uh, I need. I have a bunch of Camilla merch. I'm going to try to wear, and hopefully, I don't get seen. I'm going to wear a mask. I might dye my hair. I, I don't know. But, dude, Rob, I, you're an expert in this. I mean, I know you debate this, and you're you're mu you're much more knowledgeable about policy and all this stuff. But um, I'm a debater. You know, the, the other guy was complaining. I am kind of about vibes, and I went and voted in Dallas, and I purposely went to kind of like a lower income area in my county. And it was all liberal people in there. You could just tell just by the way they're looking, just, you know, they're effeminate or they were uh, women in, in nurse scrubs. And this is why I think Donald Trump is going to lose this election. And I hate to say this. I went to Kamala Harris's rally and every single, everywhere you could look, there was a sign that says reproductive justice, reproductive health. The whole entire thing literally is about abortion yep. and I'm looking at the polling numbers now, and I'm not an expert. You probably know this better than me, but women are voting more than men mm -hmm. right now. They're leading men in, in early voting, so they're probably going to lead in overall voting. Uh, these women don't have any other issues. They, they don't care about their pocketbook. They don't care about the geopolitical issues. They don't care about World War III. They don't care about Israel-Palestine. They literally care about like Taylor Swift and abortion. And so we're screwed. I mean, I Donald Trump, I do think, is more popular. Like, if this is a popularity contest where you didn't have to go to the polls and vote or something, like if it was an online poll, if it was a Twitter poll, Trump wins easily. But because this is a weird election and most people don't even participate, there's a lot of people that like Trump. Don't even, there's a lot of people, I went to that rally, 30,000 African-Americans, not even half of them are probably going to vote. And that's not me being racist. I could just sure. tell they were there for a Beyonce concert. You right. know, they, didn't, they don't care. They don't even know. Which they didn't get. Maybe they'll Which be they pissed and go vote. <laughs> yeah, but go vote for Trump. But see, they're not even going to. I just, I, you could just look around. I'm like, these people could give two shits yeah. about Kamala Harris. And that's true because they did all start. Not everybody left, but there was a line to get out as soon as Beyonce exited the stage. But, dude, you've been watching it. I'm sure you're looking at the polls. Obviously, I want Donald Trump to win. I voted for Trump, but I'm just. I don't think it's a slam dunk. Well, it's, now she, she's winning Iowa. What's that all about, Rob? That pool, that pool sucks. The Iowa pool sucks. So they put their cross tabs out. I just was looking at that a little. Uh, the cross tabs were like 54 of the people polled said that democracy on the ballot was the biggest issue. Then the Ugh. next like 27% polled underneath that said that abortion was the biggest issue. So that means that that's guaranteed that 70% of people said their top issues in that particular poll were the only two issues that Democrats are running on. Look, there's first off, let me say, I'm glad that people are looking at this with skepticism because I've seen too much positivity to the point of complacency with the real clear politics polling averages saying both in the battleground states and in the popular vote that Trump's ahead. I don't want people to get complacent. I hope people think, oh boy, it looks like Trump's in trouble. We need to crawl over broken glass to go vote. Now, to be honest, though, if we're talking about, I think you're absolutely right that there are a large portion of women that abortion is the singular issue, but there are certainly a lot of women that are voting for Republicans and are not using that as a singular issue. To be honest, the numbers about women voting early are true, but those numbers are about the same as they always are. Men mm -hmm. tend to vote more in person on the day of the election. So, for example, when you see a state like Pennsylvania, the proportion of early voting women is very similar to 2020. However, the difference is the firewall that Democrats had built up in Pennsylvania before Election Day in 2020 was 1.1 million. That firewall is going to be close to like 380,000 this time. And that's with the same percentages of the people that are voting early being women versus men. And so you would expect them to see more turnout on Election Day, and that turnout tends to favor men more. But certainly I think you hit on something that's very important, which is 
the Republicans are so shitty at messaging, right? Like mm-hmm. they let they let these like con- like the people that craft these narratives set it in stone, and so that we're always playing defense. Donald Trump is not advocating an end to abortion. He is merely advocating letting it up to the states. Almost all of these states where women are at are swing states like Pennsylvania. They ain't outlawing abortion. It's not going to happen. The problem is Republicans are on defense on this, which instead their message the entire time should have been Kamala Harris and Tim Walls can't name you one restriction on abortion ever. They Never. are for third trimester abortions. They are for the murder of babies three days before the due date. And before you say it never happens, it certainly does happen. For example, the Guttmacher Institute, which is one of the biggest pro-abortion institutions out there, suggests that almost two-thirds of late-term abortions are done for elective reasons. That means not because the woman's life was in jeopardy, not because she was a victim of rape, not because there were health issues with the child, but because she just decides, you know what, this would be an inconvenience to me. When you're talking about hundreds of thousands of abortions a year, that means you're literally talking about thousands of children in the third trimester or late second trimester that are being killed. And I think the American people, as much as I hate to admit it, there are It is the popular belief of the American people that there needs to be abortions that exist in the first term. And a lot of conservatives won't like that. But I think they are more disgusted by the Democrat position, which is no restriction whatsoever on abortions. It's just a problem that Republicans are outspent on the issue and they do not craft their message to sort of, you know, combat the narrative that's been put there nationally. Well, I'm anti-abortion, but I do think we probably do need to come, you're right, some sort of compromise yeah. in the messaging that you can still go get an abortion, you you know, you hoe, if you do, if you have to go get one, there's a state, you can get one. I mean, I I don't know, I'm just frustrated, but then this, I think this is weird, and you can probably analyze this pretty well. It, Dallas, overall, early voting is actually down from, and it's down like significantly, like 8%, but San Antonio in the, the like, south, southern part of Texas near the borders, record record early voting so that's kind of crazy and everybody thinks you know texas is so conservative dallas is liberal i mean austin's liberal san antonio obviously in houston for sure so those are the four biggest cities and three of those are in the top 10 in the united states so i i I don't know i mean i I don't know how kamala is going to do but i wouldn't be surprised if it's really close in texas it's it, look, and it's it's near and pop. This is why I think that you know the people that are making proclamations. I guarantee it'll be a landslide one way or the other. I don't think that's true. I think it's going to be close either way. And no I way. think that anyone, it, it, there's just so much. Listen, it's so difficult to analyze based on previous elections. 2020 is an anomaly because we massively changed how almost every state in the union votes because of this pandemic and the bullshit response to it. Now we're looking at the next national election post that. So when we say, yes, there is an increase in Republicans, registered Republicans that are early voting. Of course, the Republicans got smart and they realized to get a ground game that suggests that. But now we see that there's a decrease in Democrats. Well, how much of that decrease is because they're not shitting their pants and putting five masks on and afraid if they leave their home, they're all going to get COVID that's like leprosy and kill their entire family. So now they think, oh, I could go out election day. I don't have to have a propensity to vote by mail. And how many of those early Republican voters aren't going to be voters that we see coming to the polls? So I have no clue. And I think most honest people, you know, there are people that are trying their best to sift through this data. I choose to operate like I always do. We're two points down. I need to do everything possible to get everyone I know to vote. I agree. Yeah, you kind of have to play with urgency. Yeah, Carlos, I I mean, I've kind of taken over the conversation, but I I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm really uh, skeptical that all the people that are saying it's like in the bag. I just I I think that's the farthest thing from the truth. What do you think is going to happen, Carlos? So I, the question that I had for you is, listen, you, you are an authentic national media personality. Okay. And well, you, guys are, you guys are being way too nice. And I really, no, no, it's, it. it's, okay. it's, listen, it's the truth. Um, I named my child after you. We, we yeah. baptized him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Baby Alexander. I'll and and listen, and, and we're grateful for you coming on. We really are. But mm-hmm. it, here's, here's the <clears throat> perspective that I'm going to try to uh, ask you to, to give us. From your perspective, being in the battlefield, in the real battlefield, as opposed to people that are on the periphery, can you talk to us about why should we believe any polling? 
I don't trust any of it. I mean, it's like I don't trust her, but but see, I'm so, I don't trust anything. I don't trust any study from any college. Basically, I don't trust uh, hardly any doctors. So, I don't know. So, uh, but polling is probably BS. But I mean, at the same time, what what Rob knows this better than me. Well, you know, the polling were they accurate in 2020? No, they were terrible. And they one were of the, terrible. Yeah, I mean, one of the things the polling in both 2016 and 2020. Almost every miss that they had, and it was substantial on average, you're looking from 2020, about four to a five point miss was all in favor of the Democrats. So even though they yeah. predicted Biden yeah. would win, right. it was like they're predicting Biden will win by like seven points when he ends up winning by like one. So yeah. what a lot of people that are predicting a Trump landslide are doing are like, well, if they were six points off last time and they had Trump losing by seven, now they have Trump up by one, which means if they're another six points, well, that means Trump wins by seven, but that's not necessarily how it'll work. And so again, I I, I'm with you, man. I think the nail in the coffin for me for trusting institutions was COVID. When I heard these pricks tell me that I was non-essential and had to lock down, but if you were marching for Black Lives Matter, it didn't spread COVID. This disease is so smart that it knows your political It's safe and effective. We probably shouldn't say much about uh, that because we're on your YouTube. But well, yeah. <laughs> no, but you know, the, this is the other thing. You bring up the pandemic and, and when we talk about single issue voting, of course, they're going to talk about abortion because- it's like with the pandemic, people liked when we were shut down because the people that were doing better than us, everybody's doing the same now. So it's kind of like it, it, people kind of like socialism. Everybody kind of was a peg down. You know, you didn't have to see all your friends on their Instagram vacations <laughs> or your coworkers. No. So everybody was going through the same trauma. Right. It didn't matter. You know, even though rich people like Gavin Newsom kept, you know, French laundry open, this and that. But my, my point is misery loves company. So, like, if there's people that aren't doing well, they don't even want to put the guy in that's going to fix things because they want it to do worse. They want the crash. They want anarchy. They want it to continue to be bad. And I think that's what's going on. Like, there's just a lot of people that actually don't want this country to be better. And with the well, illegal immigration, I mean, how is this not? I mean, I'm not even – like – I'm not even anti-immigration, but dude, it's it's just an unbelievable amount of criminals. Like we have to do some vetting. We can't just let in murderers and rapists. And I'm not saying every person that I'm not even trying to sound politically correct. Obviously, not every person that comes over here is a rapist. But if 13,000 rapists have come over here, according to Fox News, and that number is probably light, and 17,000 murderers. That's 17,000 too many. I can't go to some, like Candace Owens can't go to Australia. Yep. Uh, people can't go to Canada if you've got a DUI, but you can have an ex murder uh, uh, conviction in Venezuela and in, or Haiti, and you're like, come on in. No, that's that's too far. Well, that's just yeah. it. like I don't think people like me and you are that extreme. There's certainly yeah. people on the conservative side that have more conservative beliefs than us. Yeah. But the situation is so laughable at this point. Like, for example, just the pandemic. I know you have to be a little careful on YouTube, but just the pandemic, just on this issue alone, we were told that we had to lock down. Meanwhile, they allowed hundreds of thousands of migrants that weren't vetted to come mm -hmm. in, many of which they no tested positive. I'm just saying no required. That didn't make any sense. Well, you know this, what even makes the most sense, and we, I don't want to get too, too crazy, though. Well, Israel, Palestine, you know, obviously it's terrible what's going on there. Right. But I did think it was very kind of uh, awkwardly humanitarian that they did a temporary ceasefire to give uh, Palestinians... Uh, polio vaccines did you see that yeah oh is, is, isn't that amazing it's it, it's surreal so, what, here's here's a here's a, a, a white pill about, they'll vote ceasefire for anything else but they'll cease fire hey, for hey, that big farmer yeah. needs to make a buck here like, i can't here's roll a white, my eyes enough here, here's a this. white pill i have for you alex so let's say kamala wins right the beauty for someone like you is you're going to have a fun four years, right? Yeah. <laughs> like you won't have any lack of, you know, content to be well, you able know, to I was thinking about that, Rob. I, I don't want to cut you off, but is that better? Because, you know, I'm, I'm newer to politics. I used to work in reality TV, so I didn't know what's going on, but, but I, but it, I don't know if my content is better. When I first started making content, Trump was in office, but that was like right when COVID started happening. And so a lot of people were making content, but, I, I, I don't know if Trump's in office, that might be better because I know Laura Trump, then potentially I would, I'm not saying I'm gonna be best friends with the president, but I think I'm just talking about personally selfish sure. right now. I, I, in my mind, I'm like, of course, I, I think I want Trump in the office for my personal thing, but content wise, I don't know. Do you think it's that much better if, if the content wise? Do you think, cause that's what they say. It helps conservatives if the opposite parties in 
power because you have more because you can't just bash Trump every day. If you're conservative, you have to gas him up. So you sometimes probably have to be inauthentic a little bit because there's sometimes you probably don't agree with Trump and you have to still agree. There's a, the, the beauty of Trump is there's plenty of content to go around. There will always be yeah. some because what Trump will bring out is the insanity on the other side. Trump yes. will come out and, you know, be like, no, no one respects fish more than me. And then the Democrats will be like, that's bullshit. We have a list of 13 people that we know respect fish more than Donald Trump. And then you'll have your content. You'll be able to make. But one of the things I worry about with you is shit's getting so insane that I'm afraid that people on the left will be looking at your satire as sort of a playbook. They're going to be looking at that going. They already yeah. are. There's already Walt Masters in now. Everybody's doing it. And people on the right. And I'm happy. I think there should be more people disrupting meetings and confronting politicians. So I'm actually happy that. I I mean, it's not, I didn't start that. People were doing that before me, but sure. I do think we need more citizen people to whip out their phone and confront it. It doesn't take a genius to ask questions and to kind of, you know, yell and scream at politicians. And people like it because really politics, and I'm, this is if some, somebody smarter than me said this, you know, it's just like, um, politics are just the entertainment division of the military industrial complex. Like it's all bull. It's all just, you know, macho man, Randy Savage versus Hulk Hogan. It's all fake. Like after Trump, Who's going to take over? I mean, Ron DeSantis, I like him, but I mean, is he really that big of a political icon? Is that, that's going to. Your boy Crenshaw? Maybe, maybe Dan, Dan Crenshaw, Crenshaw will take sucks. over, We're shove you around. Uh. And, and, then, and then, you know, uh, I think Ted Cruz is going to win, but he's having a tough race yeah. versus Colin already. He barely beat Beto, and Beto's a, a fraud. So I don't know. The future of conservatism hangs in the balance of Donald Trump, believe it or not. Even the conservatives that hate him, I don't think they understand how much they need Trump. So Trump could be potentially a kingmaker and help lift somebody up like he when he helped DeSantis win the governor race against that uh, crackhead. What was that yeah. guy? What was yeah. that uh, what was that guy's name again? <laughs> it's Andrew forgettable. His name what is was forgettable. It? Was yeah. it it wasn't no. I, I can't remember. I'll, I'll it'll come to me by the end of tonight, but yeah, it he's wasn't probably great in the those... motel room right now. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, you know, pills. pumping himself up here. You know, what I mean, though, is I think you're absolutely right. People obviously will emulate you on both the left and right yeah. in ways that I think is actually effective. But what I mean is they're going to take your satire as real. Like, I can't imagine how many lefties are watching you that aren't realizing when you're in front of a school board or a town council and you're talking about your wife's boyfriend being upset for something. That's like, yeah, my wife's boyfriend is also very upset. Like, well, that's become reality <laughs> with Destiny now and everything now. <laughs> And then the the Nick Ricada drama. I don't know if you see. It. Are you familiar with that? Oh, yeah. I mean, the and the Steel Toe Morning Show swipe swapping. It's like if you're on the internet, everybody. And then Trump's dropping my wife's lover. If he would have said my their wife's girlfriend, you know, if he would have he he they 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 spruced it up for him. You know, they didn't want to just totally say that joke. He should have said. Their wives' boyfriends are voting for me instead of wives' lovers. It's still funny. But yeah. now it's just, it's in the zeitgeist. It's in our collective conscious that, and for some reason, being a cuckold and cuckolding, everything about it is weird and awkward. And so it's just, it's, right it's for a funny humor. thing. Yeah, that's yeah, nice. so that's, anyway. What did you think about Destiny at that debate? Everybody cr uh, crushing them. Were you guys talking about uh, the Jubilee? Or I, I didn't talk about it much today, but yeah, I mean, you know what's funny to me? Like, Destiny, I think objectively, and see what you think about this, Alex. He's a smart guy. Like, yeah, he, he certainly is. Yeah, he's yeah, a good I debater. Do think he's smart. He's, he's full a good, of shit, but he is smart. That's right. Yes, he's he a good is, rhetorician. Yes. But he one of the good. things, he can't help but sabotage himself because he is just the most insufferable, unlikable prick under the face of the earth. He just is. He does himself no favors. What he doesn't understand about a show like Jubilee, sure, his audience is going to love him and they think it's great when he goes on there and he goes off on these tirades and all of that good stuff. But anyone that's not predisposed to already know who he is and agree with him when they watch something like that so many times it just comes off it's like even if he's making good points i can't stand to listen to this that's good for his brand that's good to get on piers morgan because you're saying the most hyperbolic shit but it's also good for someone like me that could point to it and say you see this is what these people think of you they think it's funny when an assassin shoots at trump and it ends up killing a trump supporter that's who they are Right, And so when you hear them on their moral high horse, just know they view you with the utmost contempt, think that you're a moron, think that you're some evil person that has the worst things coming to you. And I think that that does resonate. I have a lot of people that have watched me debate Destiny for hours and hours that come to me and say, when I first saw you debate Destiny, I was on his side, I was a Destiny fan. I can't handle him after this assassination attempt. I can't handle what he's become. It's good for his brand. It's good to get on bigger platforms where he's now on Piers Morgan. He's talking to Jordan Peterson. He's talking to Ben Shapiro. But it's not good optically for helping out his political side. So I welcome I wish Destiny to 
get even bigger and everyone to see every little thing he says about assassination attempts and sort of his views on life and people that disagree with him politically. Tip of the cap to him. I hope he does more Jubilees and gets schooled by people over and over. Yeah, but listen, I, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Um, don't bury the lead. This is a guy who celebrated a guy getting killed yeah. mm -hmm. at a rally. That's it. That's the lead. So he is. celebrated a guy getting killed at a rally. Because he did have a good he, point in that debate, though, because we did all joke about Paul Pelosi, even though that is not as bad. He didn't get killed. You know, I thought that was funny because you can, you there's always tit for tat. You know, there's always an example of everybody both being hypocritical sure. and Destiny's good at pointing that out. But uh, and and I'll give you his his rhetoric is uh, good. You know, he says uh, uh, hyperbolic stuff. He says stuff that's controversial. He he drops like the N word and it doesn't affect his audience. Yeah. He's kind of similar to Nick Fuentes. He's kind of like this same like because he's edgy, even though he's more more accepted in the mainstream media than Nick. But like where they have this kind of. And I think even Nick is more likable than Destiny. He but is. you know, but people obviously. But I'm saying you know they have that uh, gift of gab yeah. that it is. It, Destiny has something you kind of want to listen to. He's like, there are moments. You know, he has, yeah, he is good at talking. Sometimes I'm listening to him, like, oh shit, Destiny. And sometimes in debates, he does well. Yeah. But it, it, the fact that he's like bisexual and all that, and his wife swapping, I don't, I don't even really, I, I tease him about that. I don't. That's his business. If he's a sexual perv, that's that's what he is. But uh, Destiny's just such. He's such an ego. I think that's his problem. He's just so unhumble. Like he's. Famous on the internet. That's his one, I think, his Achilles heel. I'm really not even trying to make fun of him uh, because, like I said, I was just putting him over. But, dude, he has this ego because he's famous on the internet. Yeah, and I'm I, sure I have a little bit of an ego. Everybody, like Michael do. Jackson Everybody was does, humble. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if we're on there. But I'm just saying his ego is huge. Like, it, he just – he's not that serious. And, uh, yeah, he really thinks that he's, like, the biggest deal in the I'll world. Be, I'll be and, and, and some of those takes that he has are just – they're, they're Nick, they're they're terrible. Yeah, yeah they're I, terrible takes. It's certainly true. And look, I don't wish him any ill. I don't yeah. make. I've never made a comment to him either. about his personal relationship stuff. That's on him. Now, what happens is sometimes when you're you fight fire with fire. So if someone's if he's going to make fun of someone's relationship, they're going to come back at him with that. I get that. I've tried to stay out of that foray, but I don't give a shit. I'm not judging people that do that. Whatever. Cool in the gang with me. Oh, do, do well, speaking do. of this, sorry not to cut you off, but I, dude, I do think Andrew Wilson, because Rob, you're a great debater. I'm not, I'm not just saying that you're a better debater than me, but dude, Andrew Wilson is on fire. And I don't know if it's just because of the whatever podcast, like he's obviously was good before that. I don't even really watch that show that much. I do watch the clips, you know, on Instagram and stuff, but I don't, I don't watch like the six hour show. Streams. Sure. Um, but he's dominating. I really like Andrew Wilson's de debate skills. What do you think about him? I he's mean, great. I think he's a I think he's a much better debater than Destiny. Person. I agree. He's coming on after you. He'll be the guest. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. 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 I need to debate Andrew. No, he's really yeah. good. Well, here's uh, the thing. This is this is the highest compliment I can give. So many people on this space, they portray this character in front of the camera like they're this super likable, accessible person. And then so many times they can't wait to stab you in the back for one subscriber. <laughs> like it's it's the shittiest thing. Andrew has got the opposite issue at surface level you'd be like wow this guy's this huge prick but he's actually like the nicest guy you ever yeah, met he's really nice and guy, if you yeah. start if you actually yeah. listen to him and you get through the message of what he's saying and maybe he speaks with some coarse language he's actually a very likable guy even how he portrays mm -hmm. himself even when he's sitting there yelling at only fans girl he's doing so in a way that's actually quite yeah, charming and likable really, yeah i can't i'm not good at impressions <laughs> but the way he does it is just you know it's smooth yeah you know i don't i'm not i wish i was better at impressions but he's smooth he, he the way he it's very good. And he's, he's, we debate in different styles. I'm debating in what I would call more of a normative style where I'm like, well, look at this policy, look at this record, look at this thing that I think is an issue of corruption. Andrew's debating in sort of like define your terms. Where do you get your philosophical underpinnings for your morality? Like yeah. I'm a simple man. I'm like some redneck. That's yeah. You know all the policy. You know all the bullshit, dude. I don't know how you know all that. I mean, you can remember it all. I just, well, he's, he's blowing up because exactly what you just said he's teaching young men how to think and how to be a man and that's extremely attractive in a culture where men don't have a lot of mentors and men don't have a lot of examples of how to be a man that's why he's blowing up 
Yeah. yeah I agree. Well, and I went on Jubilee, and I don't. I don't think I'm. I'm going to get invited back because I was at the, the the. I was like on a four versus four debate, and that by the end of it, the people on the left they're like, I, I can't deal with them. He, they cut a lot out too. I was just trolling them, and you know, and getting in their faces. I I should have been a little better. I didn't even realize how big of a deal the Jubilee was, and yeah. I like those Charlie Kirk. That's a really good idea, though. But Rob, you could almost set up your one verse twenty four. John Doyle just did it. It's really not that hard, but it will cost you about two or three thousand bucks to do it right. But it probably will get millions of hits if you do it right. I might, um, I might look into doing something. You wouldn't like even that. have to do twenty four people. You could do like ten people, so give them a hundred bucks each. But you might want to vet them a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I will say, I was inspired by you at one point. So a couple years ago, you know, Dylan Burns used to do this hippy dippy. Of course, hippy dippy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I, he invites me on for this panel. That particular month, I lost my Discord channel. The reason was I got some. Oh, mess- the trans stuff, right? right. Oh, yes, yes. So yes, you yes. were on that panel. I with was me. on that remember? panel. I got Dude, kicked- you were crazy on that panel. <laughs> that was that my was Alex good. Stein impression, yeah. where I was just praising the at the feet of the altar of the mighty trans people. And, and what the- was it that you lost your Discord? But I forget. Well, who are you getting mad at? Who was it, Dylan? You're mad at? I mean, I know you were just mad at the Discord thing, but I forget. Well, who was it that you're going after? Well, I was, go- even- I, I was sort of going after Dylan and them. Yeah. So fact, but the yeah. reason I lost the Discord it was totally insane, and I didn't even give a shit about losing the Discord. What upset me was they threatened to ban everyone who was sort of a mod on my Discord, yeah. and because I set my Discord up being a novice, where I gave like mod permissions to a bunch of lefties that were just debating me on there, yeah. all of a sudden people like Stardust are getting messages like, "We're gonna end your Discord channel because you're a member of a hate community." And oh when I God. looked at it, I was like, "What the fuck's on here that's getting me banned?" I'm assuming that someone misgendered someone in hundreds upon hundreds of messages. So I had no choice but to shut the discord down because I didn't want a bunch of people that Getting, weren't connected to me this, to lose yeah, their yeah, channels. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but, but man, it, it, it's so nice to just like, uh, like it's gotta be cathartic to do what you do so often because there's nothing better than just poking fun at the very shit that they have to pretend to take serious over and over to the point where they're disgusted with the fact that they know you have a point, but there's nothing they can do except sit there and eat it that you're rubbing it in their face. Well, yeah, and we'll see. I just did uh, one, and, and and because they called me so early, I left the baby oil in my car. I was so mad, but I went up there, and I need to do it kind of again where I was pro P. Diddy, and all of these like black Instagram accounts shared it because people thought it was real. They're like, man, this guy deserves to go to jail. Lock him up with Diddy. <laughs> Because that's the best humor that that makes people really laugh is if people think it's real. Yep. Like if people don't think it's real, if they automatically know it's a bit, and that happens a lot because, like, I'm going, I, I'm I'm going on Howard University, uh, to the thing. How should I disguise myself? Like, I have a Camilla hoodie because now I go to these meetings. Everybody knows it's a gimmick. So like, I have to go there. I have to blend in. I have to not act crazy. Um, you need a scarf. You need a man bun. You think, I mean, I don't have enough hair for a man, but I was thinking about almost like dyeing my hair or something. I don't know. Yeah, blue or purple is, is you know, preferred. Thick, thick glasses. Yeah, dye your hair blue or I something. I got to wear glasses. I need to wear glasses, yeah. 100%. It's, it's a, you don't have good posture. Always be leaning, you know. Uh, I need to order some, I need to order some like non, uh, I need to order some on Amazon right now. Uh, so let me ask you this. How's things working? You still working with the Blaze? How's things still working? Still working with the Blaze. Clubs? They renewed me for another year. Thank cool. the Lord. And I love the Blaze. We got a big election night special coming up, and I got it. That's why they're sending me to D.C., and that's why I'm going to that rally. So I'm going to be uh, there all – I fly I fly Monday night. So, no, I love the Blaze. Um, what's have, the you had, you, have, you, have you had an occasion to meet Kerry Solomon and Chuck Konzelman, the guys that did Nefarious? Oh yeah, at the at the party for it, I think I met both of them. Yeah, those guys are yeah. great. Are you a Steve fan? Are you a fan of Steve? Uh, well, I I grew up with those guys. No, are yeah. you in California? Where are you? I I I was one of the guys that went out with them initially in 1990. Oh wow! So um, I've known them for 55 years, and uh, it, I, I'm hoping to get them on tonight. And um, they they live in Dallas. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah. No, I think I did meet them at that rap party. I see Steve. He's, I believe he's coming in town for it, but I'll be out of town. Steve's been catching a lot of heat, though, like, you know, for the DeSantis. The Santis bros. Yeah. I know. And I just don't, and, and I love Steve, but what do you think about that? How much is that affecting the, this election, all the uh, DeSantis defectors? Is that, is that left? I dead? think it'll have an effect, particularly if it's close and it's a shame. Look, I understand. And RFK's stealing some votes, too. They said he's got 3% in some states. Yeah, that polling's horseshit, I think, in a lot of that. 
that. Like even one of the big polls that just came out that said, where was it? Virginia we were looking at said it was 45, 45 in a head to head race. Really? You're telling me there's 10% in Virginia of undecided voters three days before the election. Like, sounds fishy. So I don't know these polls. Like I, I, I just lie. don't know what to think, but yeah, I mean, in a close election, there's certainly going to be the DeSantis people. It's a shame too. Cause I think Steve's a really authentic guy. Look, I'll be straight up. I preferred Vivek. He was my candidate of choice, and my second choice was DeSantis. Trump was my third choice, so I get the feeling. Oh, really? So you're not a Trump? So you didn't? So you're a DeSantis? Or you were a DeSantis uh, pimp? Bro? Did you get? Did you lose a lot of viewership because of that? No, I think my audience appreciated the fact that I said I was willing to take any of the three, and I left it up. Why don't you own. like Trump just because he's oh, toxic? Or oh something? no, I like I absolutely yeah. like Trump. For me, the big issue is rooting out corruption, and I thought the single most important statements that they made. Trump said first, DeSantis said that we needed to move the FBI building out of D.C., which is okay. Trump's like, no, we need to build them a big, beautiful. Yeah, building I know. See, I don't DC. like that. And, and Trump then, but, with the vax and all. There's a lot of stuff I don't like about yeah. Trump, but I want him in office because I have a personal friend that's still. In limbo about January 6th, a guy that never had a prior arrest, Luke Horseshit. Coffee. Yep. I know. And so he needs to get in to help those guys. Did I you mean, see they screwed over the guy from Mr. Yeah, from Show the Bob's from Burgers Bob's Burgers? Or whatever. What the and fuck? They gave him a year. And he's already blackballed from Hollywood. And then they give him a year for going. I mean, give him a month or something. Like, that's the problem, too. Is I don't even think America would have cared. It could have been just water under the bridge, but they don't want it to be like that. If they just would have given all the January 6th or just normal trespassing, you know, a month, you know, a couple months. It wouldn't have been as bad, but they're ruining. They're giving adults life sentences, seven years, 15 years. Like, it's just so ridiculous the way James Well, is. permit me to say something, Alex. Of course. This is why it's so important that you continue to put your boot on their necks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm always going to speak out about it because my buddy Luke had never had a prior arrest. I think when he was under 21, he got a uh, public, not a public intoxication, but like minor possession. That was the only other thing on his record. And he's looking at serious jail time. And he didn't even go inside, but they're saying he assaulted a cop because he's holding a crutch and he's like holding it against their police shields. But it's like, come on. This is just it's just so ridiculous that they're ruining so many people's lives. And they just don't give it. it yeah, they don't give a damn. Example. Yeah, but they but there's all kinds of uh, no bond release in all of these liberal places. They don't care that you can have a felony arrest, but that lets you go out on bond. Like, it's just it's sad. Um, you almost have to be like a career criminal because it doesn't affect you in that sense, you can get arrested all your life. But if you actually have something something to lose, like everybody basically on January 6th, let's be real, everybody there is probably like had something going on, had a trade job, a good job. That guy's a big time actor. And it's all their all their lives are ruined because they went there because they didn't believe the well, results of the let election. Me, let me drop some truth for my friend, the host of Conspiracy Castle. I'll give you mm -hmm. a little conspiracy here. How are you going to feel when we find out six months or so after this election that guess what? There were a lot of federal agents in that crowd and whoopsie oh, yeah. daisy, many of them motivated people to go ahead. Here's the truth about crowds. Like it only takes a handful of bad actors that you could spur a passionate crowd. I don't give a shit if it's people celebrating an NFL championship. Like it only takes after a After the Dodgers game, yeah, they all go <laughs> right. riot. That's in they're celebrating the, the happiest they could be and they riot. So it's like it's so easy to do that. You're That's right, what they just... wanted. They set it up. That's why, you know, you hear Capitol Chief Sund, who was in charge of defense that day, saying no one shared with me intelligence. The FBI is claiming they knew there was about to be an insurrection. No one did shit. They wouldn't allow me to have adequate protection. They didn't allow me to request the National Guard. That's what happened. The Democrats mm -hmm. wanted this moment where they could say, look, these evil freaking Nazis, they're a threat to democracy. See, they're what we always told you they were. To cover up from the fact that they just co-signed off of violence from Democrats for the four months months before that that's all it was and that means that actual great people like your friend that don't have any sort of record get caught up in that wave and now their lives ruined and people like there's some people that have killed themselves that yeah, literally that have dude, died right? yep. i mean so it's it's a goddamn shame and hopefully you know we could get some justice for those people if we get sort of a trump presidency i hope that's you know he said he's going to look at look there's certainly people that engaged in acts of violence and i'm not excusing that i think they should be treated similarly to other political riots that we've seen how many people were arrested that attacked the White House May 30th, 2020, when the national media made fun of Trump for having to be moved to a bunker? Mm -hmm. How many of them went to prison? How many of them went? None. So that's and the attack and attack Paul. Senator yeah, attack Paul. Rand yep. Paul. Yeah. So that's so. How, what do you think the over under is on the number of FBI agents in the crowd? Oh, it's now time. the IG they report knew. won't come. It, yeah, won't well, come you, out for a while yet, but. But oh, even if think? Trump gets in, guys, he's not going to release the JFK files. He's not going to release anything about 9-11. Like, and I love Trump, he but he's not. 
I know. No, because you know the CIA is going to sit him down and be like, you can't do this, sir. I know you're the president, sir, and I know that you want to do this, but they're going to tell him this will you know, compromise our relationships with too many foreign countries, and it's not just an American matter. It's a world matter. Like They'll just tell him he can't do it. Like these well, presidents, the- it will, this, is, this is another thing, and I learned a lot from this guy, Kyle Kemper, and he's like this wild spirit. He's Justin Trudeau's half-brother, and – He's he's conservative, really. He's like libertarian, or he's like an RFK guy. But he 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 wants Trump to win now that RFK and, and him are backing. But he's Justin Trudeau's half brother, so same mom, different dad. Justin Trudeau's wife divorced him, married some other rich guy, and he so he's his younger half brother. And he grew up knowing Justin, knowing the prime minister uh, Trudeau, or whatever. And and I was like, do you hate your brother? And he never talks bad about his brother, even though he doesn't agree with them politically. And he's like, no, I was really sad during the trucker protest, even though I was mad that they like, you know, took people's Bitcoin and stuff. It really it hurt my heart when I saw signs that said, fuck Trudeau. And I'm like, why, though? You know, your brother took the money and, you know, taking Bitcoin from these guys. You know, you're not mad. He's like, because my brother is just the quarterback of the team. He's not the general manager. He's not the owner of the team. And that's what all of these, that's what Joe Biden is. He's just like the figurehead. He does. He's not really making the decisions. And sadly, Trump gets in office. He's probably the same because he took bad information last time. He's probably going to take bad information again just because he doesn't have a choice because it's going to be the CIA and FBI. These are going to be the unelected bureaucrats are going to be telling him information and he's going to believe them because why would he not, you know? And, and he, so and I mean, that's what dude, I'm saying. So these presidents, they don't have that much Trump. That's right. Can't even fix that much if he gets in there. I mean, for God's sakes, I mean, just look at something like the Butler assassination attempt and all the questions surrounding that. At some point, the man's human, right? I don't give a shit who you are. Like, kudos to Trump for standing up and yelling fight. Kudos for how brave he's been and seemingly unaffected. I don't give a shit who you are. That affects you, right? Like, and, yeah. you know, his family's there. You know, he has to be worried that anytime he's traveling with his family, some nut job will do something. So when you're hearing the people that are most tasked with protecting you, like the CIA, that are going to blow smoke up your ass and be like, Mr. President, you know, we know know we've had a challenging relationship in the past but we're here to work with you we understand and by the way here's some things we'll ask if you don't release those jfk files it'll make the country more dangerous you're going to be predisposed to be like whatever dude i got an agenda of real policy things that i'm trying to pass i'm not going to rock the boat with these dudes release so i agree it's sad i would love to see that stuff released i would say the chances of it are very slim though unfortunately and if you're relying on one person that's going to come and fix all these problems it just ain't going to happen to me what trump represents is more of a cultural movement in a direction Direction away from sort of this bullshit and this establishment orthodoxy and i hope that it, he wins and that ball keeps rolling but it ain't anyone who's thinking oh that's it we win on tuesday if we win that's it all of our problems are solved you you got another thing coming it, it's it's not going to be that simple at all is andrew wait is andrew waiting? he's gonna be he's got like two minutes so we'll, we'll close you out on this no i want to talk to andrew for oh, okay. one minute before if i go can... i just want to transition where all is right. he if andrew's watching hop on andrew i just want to uh, talk yeah, to you about I want to ask him I want to ask him about the Jubilee because I did that Jubilee debate uh, mm. uh, and I because you know they didn't pay me they didn't pay me they gave me a stipend for my flight uh, <laughs> and, I, and I didn't I didn't even stay the whole day I literally bought a morning flight and then flew out in the late flight from LAX where do they film like, it? in Los Angeles oh, okay. I didn't even stay a whole day I flew the morning flight because they're two hours behind I flew at like 8 a.m. and got there at like 9 a.m. on a three hour flight and then went to their studio hung out all day was wrapped around seven and then took like a 9 p.m. flight back. Um, but they didn't pay anything. I'm sure they didn't pay Andrew. They probably paid for his flight, I'm guessing. I just like to, I'm if Andrew's him. watching this. Oh, they're saying Andrew's still live. Well, I can still hang on. I just want to yeah, ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, dude, why aren't you? Have you been reached out to by Jubilee yet? Nah, no one. I'm like sort of like. I'll I'm email not... you. I'll send you the Jubilee. There reps we go. Yeah, by I the will. way, Josh Sater, is that how you pronounce his last yeah, name? Yeah, yeah. I heard you did, did a debate did, with him. I saw some of those clips. Cry. Josh is crazy. I like Great Josh. Dude. Josh is insane. The yeah. nicest guy ever. Dude, it's so insane. funny. He's like, yeah, Alex told me. He's like, I basically thought I was doing like a 10 minute segment. He's like, so how long is this? I'm like, two hours. He's like, what? It's yeah, he two does. Hours. He's Because he went to law school, he doesn't practice law. And so, you know, I'm like, you should start doing debates then, dude. That's the people. I mean, Rob, you have to admit, this is, it's hard. Uh, other people too don't, I'm not like saying they don't get it, but it is hard to go and just know that you're going to argue with somebody for two hours. It, it does. It's fun it, for sure. It's fun, but it is a little draining and taxing for and sure. And it's, yeah, it's like, 
the more you do it, the worse it becomes for this reason, right? Because it's almost, I imagine it's like, I, this is going to sound like the dorkiest shit ever, but it's like being a professional fighter, right? Like if you're a badass, mm -hmm. you don't want to fight someone that doesn't have a record for being a badass because yeah. if you win, no one gives a shit. And if you lose, oh boy. So like every time I walk into a debate with some like random person, like I'm not infallible. They're going to catch me someday. Someone's going to catch me. So you get on there and you're debating these, you know, high school kids or these college kids or whatever. And everyone's looking to take you down a peg. You know, and I told Josh, I was like, he's like, you know, what, are you going to dress up? I was like, oh man, we're going to be debating like college kids living with their parents. Like it's, yeah. it's not going to be like what you'd It's see, not like, that serious. People take yeah. some of these debates so serious. You do a little bit. You know, I don't think you take it too serious, but some people do so, take it really serious. I don't know if it's, necessary to take it so serious because you're never going to convince the person you're debating you know well, what, I mean? what it's what it's about is incremental changes that you're making to an audience you're never there's like you're never going to convince that well very rarely are you going to convince that person you're debating but people watch that andrew's here andrew will tell you one of the things that's andrew. Great about andrew is that sort of convincing is, wait, is that audience is that alex stein mm -hmm. is that Hip is that number blend. 99 you know, what's you know up there is. is andrew great job with destiny but i had to ask you know i was on jubilee and the the Asian producer woman is that who was running that one? I forget her name. Uh, it was a heavy set chick. Oh, that might have been a different because you know they do it in, like different episodes, right? You know they have a, and yeah. I was just like four versus four, and I was going crazy, and they actually didn't show a lot from my debate. <laughs> Uh, I don't think they're going to have me back, but they didn't pay anything. They gave me a $400 stipend for a flight. So they, I bet they didn't pay you anything. Did they, were you just already out there for whatever? Uh, yeah, I was already out there $25 for gas. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And I was yeah. on a, I was on a small one that they're like, normally <laughs> we don't pay. I was like, I will fly out there and fly out that night. That's what I did. I took a morning flight I, on spirit airlines. Didn't even mm -hmm. bring a bag. And I brought like a little bag and flew it right back that night. But what did you think about the experience? Did you like it? Because as a debater as experienced as you, it's kind of lame. Um, you only got to be for like a segment with Destiny. You know, that's not that's not fair. Well, I hadn't planned on going out there at all unless I was going to do the like 1v20 myself. But I happened to be so close because I was in Santa Barbara and mm -hmm. I there happened to be another guy who was there who was going I could catch a lift with. So it was it was kind of silly not, not to go ahead and yeah, go. It'd yeah, it'd be stupid not to do it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was like, yeah, sure, you know, I'll head over uh, and uh, and do it. But it was not it's not really a format which is very conducive to debate. That's for sure. Are you uh, what you would call it? Are you did did you just insinuate that you're setting up a one verse twenty debate? Are they are they talking with you about doing one? No. John Doyle just set one up, dude. You've been crushing it, dude. You've been crushing it with the debates lately. Um, but, oh yeah, uh, but yeah, we do well. But John Doyle is he set up a, a his own twenty four, and then Charleston White, my friend, he does one. He would does there's like that black show twenty verse one where they like talk to twenty hoes. Do you know what I'm talking about, Andrew? Yeah. People love that. People love that format. You can yeah. just set it up yourself. You don't even freaking need. Jubilee, but it is nice that they do all the legwork. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, I mean, the thing is, though, is they only gave you 600 bucks, bro. No, 400. 400 for a flight? For a flight. And I flew Spirit. I, got I was going to say, like, that's a Spirit yeah. flight. And, and it is Spirit. And, and, it, and it was under. My Spirit flight was like 280 or something. But yeah, yeah. That's that's all they gave me. It was four versus four. And I was with Emily Wilson. She's blowing up, too. She was at yours. Or no, she was at a different one. They, they just had one that was like 30 versus 30, I, I saw. Jubilee really? is insane. Yeah, I should yeah. have probably been nicer though, because I don't think I'm ever gonna get to go back. Mm -hmm. How the hell with them? You know, I, I know. don't. I don't get invites to things like that. Maybe I'll start to break through, but we can get you on there. You can get on there if you want to get your ass to LA. I'll send you the casting director's <laughs> information. They're looking for people to debate. Andrew knows if he mm -hmm. knows what their kind of operation they're running. It's like a maybe I'll it's maybe like a I'll content do it. Ponzi scheme house. They got a, just a big warehouse they rent and they just put people in it with. Why dude, we were nice? this the, this whole thing happened in South Central, dude. In the yes, in the, the airport. Yeah, dude, in the like ghetto. Dude, it's in like dude, it was, it was in the LAX. ghetto, yeah. dude. Not, uh, not in between LAX and like the water, which is kind of no. decent. Like no, LAX it was South. in it was in the industrial <laughs> area of South Central. Like you'd roll yeah. through and you're like, man, there's gonna be 
chalk outlines of men any mm-hmm. minute dude. And there's a bunch of homeless people who broke down <laughs> rvs back there did you see those on those yeah streets back yeah there? so bad yeah so many <laughs> rvs just cracked are out they like are they like trying to intimidate you like here's the guy that lost the last debate there's his fucking chalk outline right there no you know, it's just because they're cheap as shit because they're a youtube no. production company so they just they got the building in the worst neighborhood they could get it in they could afford yeah yeah i mean seriously la is insane Oh, how's whatever going, Andrew? You're on there all the time, dude. Is that is that fun? Why don't you get me on that show, dude? Tell them to get me on it. We can get you. We can get you on whatever. You should. I'll fly out there. I now, dude. You've been crushing it. I mean, obviously, I'm. Uh, I mean, I'm not kind of your type of debater. I'm probably gonna go on there and simp out. I'm worried. I have to go in there and be a. No, dude. you can go. Or you can go on there and be a simp on a blimp, bro. I know. You know, I end up simping out. Then my girlfriend kills me. I, I can't do that. My girlfriend will cut my balls off if I simp one bit. Uh, yeah. I mean, out. yeah, I'm sure Brian would love to have you out there. Yeah, you're still you're still with the Blaze, aren't you? I am. I am still with the Blaze. Yeah, how's all that going over there? It's going good. I'm actually going to DC to cover Kamala's rally. And so I need to wear like a, a disguise, but I'm kind of worried. We're staying in Capitol Hill, but DC's like rough and I'm going there on election night and I'm gonna I'm yeah, but you're like six nights. foot four, dude. I know, but dude, there's just so many crackheads and drug addicts. I don't want somebody to rob me from my iPhone, you know? Yeah. It's just... And dude, I just went to Portland. I don't know. Guys, this is going to make me sound racist. I'm not racist, but Portland, it rains a lot, but it's one of the best states I've ever been to. Every single person there is a white guy. And like, even like the Dunkin' Donuts everywhere. It is the nicest place I've ever been in my life. Probably because it's so gentrified. It's the nicest... Uh, um, I just was blown God. away. He's uh, Alex. Like, how, how nice you're getting canceled, Alex. You're gonna get canceled. No, but I'm just saying, like, I, have you ever seen the show Portland? I might move to Portland. It's so nice. They call it the Switzerland of the Pacific Northwest, or the Switzerland of America. It's, it's just was so nice. Have you guys ever been to Portland? Have you spent much time in Portland? I'm blown away by how much I liked it. Nobody now, wants see, to go to Portland. See, Nobody wants DC's to go to Portland. Opposite. You go to Capitol Hill, it's very dark and scary. <laughs> Portland, I would say the roughest area in Portland. They said this is where Antifa did all this stuff. Chinatown. Dude, it looked like a movie set. I mean, there were some people that was rough, but it was like beautiful building. It looked way nicer than New York City. I'm like, this is the roughest area. And then so I start searching. I'm like, roughest areas in, in uh, Portland. Of course, I get multiple Reddit things. Two different people. I'm an Uber Eats driver. I've been driving for four years, and I'm still curious. Are there any places I can't deliver that are too dangerous? Because I've delivered all over the city, and I can't seem to find any terrible places. And literally, it's like 10 other comments like, yeah, Portland's actually pretty safe even in the rough areas. Just watch out for the Antifa every once in a while. So, And Antifas are all pussies, dude. They're actually not really scary. They're... Those are, I'm not really that worried about antifa Well, either. I mean, there's rules they have to follow, like all police officers, right? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> right, right, Alex. There's rules. They're that they all, have to probably follow. all feds. Do you think the Do you think the Patriot Front are they all feds, uh, Andrew? Yes, of course they are. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, I don't think Nick Fuentes is a fed. Do you think Nick's a fed? No, I don't think so either. I really. Don't but think I think so. that I think that those guys. Yeah, of course. Yes, the Patriot course. Front is. Yes, yes. They're too well toned. Absolutely, you're not going to find so. a bunch of races that are that built. <laughs> Like, it's no, because it's happen. like a fraternity. A lot of guys, like Fight Club was kind of like a documentary in a way. Like people want to feel a part of a group and have their, um, I, you know, it's our social bug that we have. And I mean, I don't know if you want to be a part of a group where you have to wear a mask, but people do fraternities and they pay thousands of dollars to spank each other and like um, do like pseudo homosexual stuff. So it, it wouldn't surprise me that people like to put on a, a white shirt and wear a white mask and walk around. I mean, I'm not. I do believe there's people in Patriot Front that are earnest and just want to be a part of something. Well, listen, listen. Do you, you know the thing that's really funny, right? Is that if if you say are they feds, right? I think that the, what what messes this all up is that basically every group, any established group in the United States of any kind, which is uh, external to any government power, is going to have federal informants in it. it mm-hmm. All of them. If they're if they're in any way, shape, or form uh, related to any type of political activity, they're going to have informants in there. Like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which yeah, one there is. They'll infiltrate anything. What do you think's going to happen? Uh, sorry, I'm taking over, Rob. I just wanted to talk. Hey, to I've Andrew. been doing we'll, this for we'll talk. sixteen but, but hours. Hey, I've hey. just I haven't talked to Andrew. It's such a, yeah. a privilege, Andrew, to catch up with you. But what do you think's going to happen? I think I went to that Kamala rally. I just said this to Rob and to Carlos, dude. It, every sign was reproductive rights, reproductive rights. Yeah. They had four different people come up there and say, yeah. I want to have an abortion. More women are voting. People are stupid. 
they're gonna they're gonna win this election because of freaking abortion and that's why they say there wasn't a red wave i that's also crazy. think that listen this is a very un, i've gotten a lot of shit for my opinion on this right uh i'm gonna be doing you should come by too uh tuesday i'm doing uh, all day all night election stream till they shut it down yeah, you I'll hop pop on. On. i'm hopping on a bunch but i'll be at i'll be in dc but yeah i'll hop on for my yeah phone. hop on at least for a little bit so you can show us the signs and shit but anyway uh i i think kamala's gonna take it I do. I think Kamala's going to take it. I can't and, it. and the I thing just... is, is that I, I think that even if she really shouldn't take it, she'll take it anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, they're going to afford it. They're going to take it. Yeah. With Phil I mean, dude, they let Philadelphia get like an actual drug den. They probably do that on purpose because they know that it'll be corrupt and they can pad the votes. Like, this is bigger than you and I, the deep state, FBI voting, however, you, whoever does it, whoever is the quote unquote deep state. They know it, it. This is a perfect example. I just went, and I'm not trying to brag. I spoke at Oregon State. I was just in Portland. You can tell I'm going to Portland. I'm going to Oregon. High. You know, I never guy? buy a shirt when I go to a city. I bought four shirts that said Portland. That's how much. Why I are you trolling it. anyway? Portland's a shithole, bro. It's not, what are you paid? Such a shithole. This dude paid, paid by in. Portland City it's Council beautiful. or some shit. Uh, I have no <laughs> idea how beautiful Portland is. It's built on a river and it's got six bridges and the in the mountains and the clouds. Forget about that. But Oregon has it's a filled thing. with garbage. <laughs> no, they got to clean. They got to clean. They got to clean. Yeah. Commercial for Portland. They got it cleaned. Imagine, a, imagine a, a two million white people. You think it's gonna be that dirty? But listen, go go back. To what I'm saying is, Oregon was always conservative, and then they make it where even on election day, you do, you're not voting. You're filling out a mail in ballot. They had mail in ballots before. Some states do only mail in voting, and Oregon's one of it. I think Washington's one of it. So when you go and vote on election day, you're just filling out your mail in ballot and dropping it off at the election spot. And they said ever since they had mail in ballots, it's been consistently liberal Democrat. So they've been cheating elections in this for a lot, lot longer than it's probably since Bush and Al Gore. They probably just decided to give it to Bush. I think you know. I mean, you guys probably all remember that. That was a contested how, election. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know how young you were, Rob. I'm sure. But that was, was a that was a contested election. Yeah. Well, what yeah. do you mean? They it fought contested. it. They fought it out in court. That when you have the establishment Republican and Democratic Party that there's not that much greenery or scenery between, yeah, they don't really give a shit. You know, to them, it's like, as long as we have control over this, people like Trump, and even back in 2016, Bernie Sanders scared him a little because I don't think they felt that they were controllable. And that's what all of the, you know, Bernie sold out. He's got his second late house, lake house. Uh, I'm here once more asking you for more money to shill for the Democratic establishment. So he sold out, but Trump's still like the last bastion. Then you see people like RFK. So yeah, they'll happily, when it's th when it's those, so they don't give a shit. Give it to Bush, give it to Gore. We don't give a shit. But uh, yeah. They're definitely putting the thumb on the scale now. Rob, did you just get fifty gifted membership? Yeah, I was gonna read. I was. I didn't and want to you interrupt didn't you. Say anything. If, you didn't if, share. I'm a dude, piece that of guy ungrateful gave 50 shit. Gifted is that's like two hundred fifty bucks. This dude's. Well, I think my memberships are only three bucks, but this dude's Whatever, like, can I get a still. refund? You know what I mean? Let me read these real quick. Sci guy for four ninety nine. Thank you so much. As this is literally the best live stream on right now. Thank all four of you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Intel Wild for 20 bucks says, Rob, thanks for doing the 24 hour stream. I learned a lot from you. I learned of you from Andrew. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Nick with 50 gifted memberships. You psychopath. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And Psy Guy, two bucks. I've heard rumors of this. I don't know what the exact are. He says, Andrew's going to lose $2,000. You get some sort of bet on the election? What's that? What's that about, Andrew? Okay, so. Uh, maybe a stupid bet on my part. We'll see. Right. So I'm chatting, chatting with destiny and I'm like, well, you want to put some money on this election? He's like, yeah. So, uh, but the problem was, is that we both think Kamala is going to win. So he's like, well, I'll do it, but it has to be double or nothing then. And so you're betting that Kamala wins. So basically if Kamala wins, I get a thousand bucks, but if Trump wins, he gets 2000 from me. Mm. It'd be well worth it. 2, yeah. You bucks. gave him odds, but I mean, <laughs> I still think Kamala is going to win. I mean, I just mm -hmm. don't. They're not going to let. And if Trump wins, they're going to try to assassinate him within like the first. By the way, my whole chat's giving me L's for this bet. They're so pissed off about this fucking bet. But the only reason I think that they're pissed off about the bet is because I told him I was like, well, because if I lose, I'm going to be like, guys, I need two thousand dollars. Guys, I need two thousand. <laughs> well, I'm about to. I, 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 I laid a bet on Kelsey for fifty oh, bucks. I'm about to lay a bet on two hundred on Kamala because or Kamala or whatever the fuck her name is because I'm such a bad sports better. I need to reverse jinx it, right? Because right. I bet on Trump. I'm going to lose. Trump's going to lose because I bet on him. That's how OCD yeah. I am. So I have to, I need to go put money on. Trump's going to lose because you can't pronounce her name.
Okay, whatever. I just need to get Kamala. <laughs> I need to reverse the jinx. So we're fucked, dude. We are just get out. 100%. Get on fucking Poly Market right now, or Calshi or whatever the hell it is. Get I just went over. Market. Just went over to Poly Market earlier. I think that they had Trump at fifty three, Kamala at forty six. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it was very. Or it was fifty. Gap- I'm sorry, fifty four, forty six. So, yeah. it, they had a fifty four, forty six, and uh, what was really interesting, I looked at that and said, well, this is this is quite the drop. Well, on X, uh, one of the one of my followers sent a, a screenshot, which showed that it was two guys who bought up like, I don't know, like fifty thousand shares each for Kamala, and that swung the odds market over to Kamala just off these two guys. And I was like, well, that's fucking sus. That shows you how it's all fake. No it's question. all fake. Mm-hmm. That's exactly how the odds work. And more people just put money on on Kamala, or, I mean, on Trump because the, they've those companies have been better advertising to conservatives to get on there i mean that's the only reason and per- conservatives probably have more money because that's all fake that's not a real representation of how the election is going to go at all the poly market betting and then for me I, this this is like people are like in well, my but, chat but like, hang on hang on alex though you think it does wait a second because well kind of if it if it was if it was being done fairly perhaps because when we look at uh the betting markets when it comes to futures they're pretty correct well, I mean, I just, futures I, I, is really correct. Like, if they're betting on a technology or something like this, it's it's usually that that technology does become emergent. So, just saying, you know. Well, again, I guess this is different than sports betting, but I'm thinking of the sports betting where the line just moves on one big bet because it's just the, mm-hmm. the book, you know, changing the lines to predict yeah. their odds, you know, just financially. So I think it is more akin to that, yeah. So that's what I think it is, because if you have one big whale in Vegas, even I think the Super Bowl, because I get so much, it's hard for a whale to move the line. But like, let's say it's the Eagles versus Lions or, what, you know, some random game and somebody goes in there and bets $100,000, it will literally move the line a half a point in any direction. So I know whales can move that. But I just the only reason I don't trust those sites, they're trying to make money. They're, I, mean, I don't trust any casino. And I like to gamble. I'm pro gambling, even though it's a terrible hobby. Do not do not suggest people doing it. I do enjoy going to Vegas or wherever. And you know, I like the risk. Am I going to win? Am I going to lose? But you never trust a casino. And I, everybody, if you guys want to go have fun, go gamble. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. But I don't... I don't uh, I don't know if I trust, uh, you know, well, here's, any here's, casino. Here's the things with this shit, right? Hang on, well, hang on. This guy said gamblers, though, Alex, don't take make bets if they think they're going to lose, except Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not true. People, I, a real gambler, you make long shot bets. Right. I, I say I disagree. A real gambler, like, like an a, a inexperienced gambler, you always bet on. You know, By the way, fuck that chatter. What a dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah, fuck that guy. You're out. <laughs> <laughs> But, but it's better you get better odds on the long shot, you know? So, like, a real gambler, you kind of bet on something knowing that you can lose and that, hey, it's 20 bucks, it's 100 bucks or whatever. But. Well, for me, I I say great, right? This Iowa poll that came out that said Kamala's winning by three. You know, the poly market's shifting now. Good, because if Trump does have a shot to winning, we're going to have to have enthusiasm, people going out there. The worst thing that happened in 2020, I can't tell you how many panels I was on where people are like, Trump's going to win 48 states. And I'm like, what are you smoking? Right. And that sort of idea of complacency. So I say, great, let him put every poll out that says Kamala's winning every single state. Poly market goes 70 percent to Kamala. Great. That'll motivate people, in my estimation, to do even more to get out to the polls. So I don't give a shit. Um, and, you know, if they want to manipulate that Iowa poll is so laughable. The poly market, you have two people that are basically swinging. Great, I don't give a shit. I'm gonna do. My, even though I think that Kamala's gonna win, the way I motivate myself to work best is to always think anything in life. You're like one point away. That you're losing by one point. So you just gotta have that edge. To kind of have that chip on your shoulder to do more. So I say, fuck it. Leave them, leave them go out there. Hey, if you're listening, you're a Kamala fan. Look at that poly market shifting. Might as well stay home. It's in the bag, right? No right. need to get out That's there. That's the worst mentality. She's, she's yeah. winning Complacency. Iowa. So Kamala fans, stay at home. You know, no need to get out there. So I'd like to ask Andrew, we asked this earlier, uh, as content creators, as debate bros, is it better, though, if it's a liberal in there ruining the country? Does that give us more stuff to talk about? No, uh, content wise, no. No, because I don't think so either. because I don't it's think either, so either it's either I'd offense or defense, point. right? So, right. if it's a person who's representing our worldview, then we're we're on defense, and sometimes being on defense is is ten times more brutal than being it's on offense. Way harder to right? be on defense. Yeah. Come so on. I think I think I think in many ways, having your representative government that you want in office, actually for a content creator is better, uh, because if you're on defense. 
often they can't get at the politician themselves, but they can get at people who defend that politician. Right. And so basically you're under siege in a lot of ways. We can very, read a couple super good chats observation. here. Get a super, yeah. Alder Void for five bucks says, I just noticed I don't want to donate to Destiny, so Robert, take my money instead of Andrew. There you go. <laughs> Already taking <laughs> <laughs> one, five less dollars to Andrew's 2000 You're taking Andrew, money, out of, that, right? you're taking Andrew, money out of my kid's there mouth, bro. Right. <laughs> Andrew, were you trolling? Did you sit down purposely right in front of Destiny? Did you do that right? Because you had to just look at him that whole time. I thought it was, is, is that, did you pick that seat or did they pick that seat? Uh, well, I mean, that was that was it. That's where everybody sat. No, not when you moved up, but weren't you sitting like right across? From oh, no, that's where they told me to sit. Yeah. Yeah. And the third I'm talking when you were in the ring. So you yeah, just sat yeah. there for an hour and a half and didn't even talk to him, just stared at him for an hour and a half. Well, mostly I was staring at the back of the person who was in front of me because Destiny is really, really small. He is so tiny. It, basically, everybody sitting in front of me blocked out my view of Destiny. That's a shame. You, so. you, you missed a, you missed was a lot of exciting bullets? mouth movements. Was know? he sweating bullets? Like, do you guys have? Are you guys on good terms, or what is your? Uh, is he, I you mean, know? we've we've always been adversarial, and we're always going to be adversarial. You know what I mean? But uh, I, so I'm not sure about good terms. But like, I'll deal with the guy, and he'll deal with me. That's that's about as much as yeah, at you good terms as we can give for each other. You guys yeah, are... I mean, he's got me blacklisted, but he he ignores his own blacklist all the time. So. I too am blacklisted. I'm it's blacklisted. A, what a what a terrible what you know a terrible thing. I've been put on notice by left wing. You're screen. on notice. I'm, I'm right? blacklisted. Holy shit! What, are of... you on notice by who, Rob? Pisco. He put me on Pisco. notice because I put the word lawyer in quotation marks, and he said it was an affront. And an accusation that he was violating the law by illegally practicing law. Yeah, but in Pisco's defense, I think that Destiny keeps people around him who are ten times more insufferable than he is, <laughs> so yeah, that so Rob that said. so that people are more likely to deal with him rather than the insufferable orbiters. Yeah, there's probably some truth, Andrew. What do you think about the Steel Toe Morning Show Nick Ricada uh, wife swapping drama? Yeah. Oh man, the. Uh, that shit's been wild. Um, there's so there, the the internet's made up of multiple sides in the political spectrum. The troll side, uh, it, Rikita was in an interesting spot, right? Because he's uh, between the legitimate legal side and the troll side. He was between both of those worlds. So he was dealing with the Ethan Ralphs of the world mm -hmm. uh, over on the troll side, the drama side, this and that, while simultaneously dealing with really legitimate law tubers yeah. who were covering these massive trials and this guy was making you know a hundred thousand dollars a day doing these massive trials so he was between these two worlds uh unfortunately though the he started on that other side right on that other streamer streamer side the more trollish uh you know uh, content creation side so it actually didn't surprise me they had known in those circles for years that this guy was essentially and all this stuff. yeah that he was essentially you think that a he fucking I, I think he just neglected them if we're going to get in the woods i don't think that he actually abused them because they went to a small school and i'm not even trying to be a, a janitor sweep for them you know mm -hmm. i listen to kino casino those guys are so hilarious but they you know they <laughs> yeah. bash they bash nick and i'm not even trying to defend nick i just really don't think that well those guys those guys all but, but oh. those guys all know rikita like they were dealing with Rakita before you were even on the scene. Right, exactly. Alex? I didn't know. That's what I'm saying. I'm new to the scene. I <laughs> yeah, didn't even know. Yeah, they were. They this. were dealing. They were yeah. dealing. All those guys were all dealing with each other before any of the other kind of uh, internet personalities were even emergent. Coach Redfield. These Red guys. Was yeah, these guys yeah. were all fighting with each other in their own their own circles, and so you know, like Ashton and Warski and all those guys, they all know each other. So <laughs> these guys, they all have dirt on each other. They're always talking shit about each other. And it's like they have long history, and I stay the fuck out of it. Yeah. Dude. It's I not, try to. I, I really stay out of that to. shit. It's dark, and then Ethan Ralph pulls me in, and I don't even hate Ethan, even though he said disgusting stuff. It's just you try to just comment, and that now I'm. This is gonna get clipped. I listen clips for sure. This is gonna get. You know, they're, they're gonna clip this, but. Um, it is a dark corner of the internet, but dude, this steel toe Nick stuff. I, Cause I didn't even really watch Nick. Well, I it's not, I don't know if it's a dark corner, but it's, it's a different corner. Mm -hmm. Like these guys, these guys were all around long before any of us were, mm -hmm. and they were doing all sorts of different content creation and this and that. And they were all working with each other and they were all pretty good friends at, at different points. And uh, just over the years, man, they've had so much interpersonal conflict 
that once it explodes, then it's like everybody has everybody's skeletons. Everybody's fighting over all these skeletons. But people, my understanding is that people knew that this was going on for a long time. And, uh, and you know, uh, at least Ethan Ralph says that, that he knew that something like this was going on on the DL for a long time. And it's like, I, I can't even keep up with it. I thought it was an interesting story. I never weighed in on it. I stay completely away. Uh, other than maybe like going on the kill stream for a debate or going on Kino Casino and chopping up with those guys, I really like those guys. Uh, I really stay kind of clear of that side of the internet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just, well, I just want to say this. I'm not even trying to defend. I don't think Nick really is an abusive guy. I think he probably neglected his kids, probably got a little strung out on alcohol. Then when you're drinking a lot, then all of a sudden cocaine is kind of like it's a synergistic high, you know, it mixes. So, um, I, I don't know. I don't think he's as bad as they say he is, but obviously he's got some demons that he needs to really address. Um, I've never, I've never actually talked with Nick Ricada even once, um, and I've never, I've never had any interaction with the guy, yeah. and I don't, I just don't know anything really about him. So it's, it's like law content's very good. Like the dude yeah, clearly he's knows what he's, yeah, he's talking about. He's entertaining. You know, I've watched many of his streams or when he would be on other shows, and I like this content. Uh, but, yeah, to be to have a foot in either of those worlds, you know, listen, it's sometimes it's nice to just be like me and be just a boring dude. <laughs> you well, that, like no, but, Rob, it's not even about boring. It's what you do because they'll make uninteresting people. It's like, you know, we're, well, these are guys, they, listen, Rob, these guys are like, it, you know, you think that there's their little drama and shit on Twitch and stuff like this. That ain't nothing compared to what these good. These guys are in. I mean, they do the. PPP they do the most is one of the best funny. He's one of the yeah, funniest but, guys. But I mean, on this this stuff has led to swattings and like these guys Lawsuits. are real. They really go the fuck at it. Like it's not a joke that side of uh, yeah. that side of the internet. And so it's just kind of better to. Uh, I'm happy. Generally, hey, I wish to steer clear. Well. <laughs> yeah, I wish Mo L. As long as it's mutual combat, have at her. You know, I I, I don't give a shit. More power to him. A couple more super chats because some of them are directed to you guys. Uh, uh, thanks so much, Robbie Heck Music, for the membership. Says God bless. Really appreciate it. Crucible Ghost for ten dollars says Andrew is the goat. I don't know that he's that unattractive that he looks like a goat, but what a we fucking still, jerk, dude. We what appreciate a jerk. the money. We appreciate that. Uh, uh, Crucible Ghost also for two bucks says Alex, please fan the very real fireplace. Hmm. There it is. Oh, I can see there the flame go. moving. Yeah, and I t I believe it. I totally believe it. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have. Mike Alvredo's TBE for five bucks says, you guys need to see Christian Prince destroying Destiny in a debate today. It was brutal. He got quartered, went to sargasm, and Destiny rage quits. I saw a brief portion of it, but I didn't get to the bulk of what would make that debate good. But um, always Does nice Destiny to quit see. a lot of debates? Probably not. He rage quit with me. Oh, he did? Prick, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And me. Yeah, Legendary. Did. Legendary. And then blacklisted. <laughs> okay, so and then, yeah, he does. He does. Black, yeah, it seems to be a pattern. And then I saved this one for last. I don't know what this is about. I must have missed this, but... Um, let's get it. Handyman Jack for five dollars says, "Rob, ask Alex about Marshawn in Vegas when he chased him." Marshawn Lynch almost beat me up in Las Vegas. He assaulted me because I tried to get a selfie with him, and he hit my phone out of my hand, and I grabbed it. And the only, and he went to beat me up. He has like major CTE. He was so mad, and the video went really viral. It's on my Instagram. You can type in Alex Stein, Marshawn Lynch, but um. I had to run behind. You know how they have little red. Was that? Hang on. Was that with the elevator? Yeah, no, but it was in no. the lobby of a casino. Yeah, and, and you can see an elevator in the background. But but you see, I'm running away from him, and I have to run behind a blackjack table. They're like, "Sir, you can't get back here. This is the pit." I'm what like, was the one where there was the black chick who was who was like? Oh, what? that's Barstool Sports. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that right. girl cut her finger on my face. Oh, no, I'd mm -hmm. like to mend the fences with uh, with uh, Dave. Well, dude, What's I just point? wanted to hop on for a little bit. I wanted to talk to you, Andrew. I'll, I'll leave. So I know you debate bros got to talk about some stuff. Dude, you've been killing it, Rob. You have too. Uh, Carlos, nice to meet you. Hey, thanks, Alex. Hey, I hope things are going real good over there at the Blaze, man. I'm on the grind. I'm covering the thing. I mean, you, dude, you know how hard it is, though. It's like I, I feel like this is the this is my problem is I, I constantly need to either go to like a new protest or go to a new. Why did you let me ask you something? Why we got you here? I've just always wondered about that. Maybe maybe this isn't even good for public combo. I just curious, like you were always such an independent do whatever I want, not beholden to anybody. Mm -hmm. Fuck all these people. I'm going to yes, do the conspiracy castle. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. do my own thing. How the fuck did you end up in that Blaze contract anyway, Alex? <laughs> you have a good point because I'll, I'll be honest, and I love the Blaze. I don't want to leave the Blaze. They they pay me and they they were giving they me. They just resigned them. 
They were, well, for a year, just a year, but they, they gave me creative freedom. Um, but I had a really rough part of the year where I went to a Nikki Haley event. They wouldn't let me in. And all I, and it was bad what I did, but it wasn't that bad. The staffer that escorted me out, and this was live, I go, what are you going to do when Nikki's campaign's over in a month? What are you going to go do? Only fans? Just a joke. And that clip got shared that. by all these conservatives. Look at this sex freak you're telling a conservative who what just because she didn't work for Trump, it's all the DeSantis people went after me. Like, this guy, look, this is what MAGA is telling girls to join OnlyFans. And dude, Chip Roy. A you remember that, the, when he told AOC she had a nice ass? <laughs> well, they didn't care about that. That's they okay. Really like that. That's different. The optics of that's not right, a right, deal. Right. Back to the story. Because back I to did story. say big booty Latina, <laughs> and she said big juicy ass. You're a very good debater. My point is, it got me in some hot water. Luckily, the boys did not want to cancel me. They stuck with me. But it, there is that, because I didn't even think that that was that bad. But yes, that is the... That is a trade-off. And, and you know, if I was on my own, could I do edgier stuff? And would that probably be more well-received? Yes. But, I mean, at the same time, I like the credibility and the uh, security and the support. And I like the Blaze. So I am I have zero complaints. Well, I'm not saying that, that you have anything bad to say about him. I was just always curious because you were such an independent uh, person. Like, I remember the early days of the Crucible. You come on and do blood sports, man. Yeah. And we'd be tangling well, you know, it but, up. You know, there's another thing people don't realize this is that the Blaze is at, and you've been to the Blaze, right, Andrew? No. Okay, I gotta fly you out. We're gonna get you. We're gonna get you on. And I know you're busy as hell, but we'll fly you out. I want you we'll to come. come I'll come out. I'll, I'll get you on all the shows, and we'll we'll fly you out. But the Blaze is at the old Paramount Studios where they filmed RoboCop, JFK, and oh, when cool. they did RoboCop, Dallas was supposed to be like the third coast, so they built this huge movie studio, like they have, like the new ones they built in New Mexico, or you know, like the ones they have in L.A. or New York. You know, big movie studio. Robocop, they blew up a gas station and caught a building next door on fire. So the city council like made it really hard for a movie production to get good tax credits. So they all went to Austin. So this building stopped getting used. Every episode with Barney was shot there. But when I was in middle school and high school, you had to go on a field trip to there to see like movie props. Because it was still, it was like, you know, an independent, it was a huge studio, but you could rent it out for independent production. So they take schools there to do a tour and they'd be like, this is how you do special effects makeup. This is a camera. This is a grip. And it's like, I went on that field trip twice and I was like, I want to work here. I want to work here when I'm older. And then what do you know? I'm working at the blaze. And I go on circuits all the show. I'm like, this is where you should tour. I was like, I want to fucking work here. So, you know, um, I like working there. That was part of the reason that, that kind of kismet thing. That was one of the main reasons I was like, I really like it here that, I, that I, when I was a little kid, not that little, but I was like, I want to work at this building and now I work there. So, well, crazy. here's the thing though, Alex, if you ever go independent again, I'll be interested to see what happens. You know what I mean? I'll be interested. That's all I'm saying. I'll be interested to see what happens. I remember some of those early Conspiracy Castle episodes. Yeah, it's, it was. they were such high-energy shows. Mm -hmm. They were a ton of fun to watch when you had your stupid little suit on. You know what I mean? And we're... That, that you've was been a watching. Lot. You've been there. You're an early adopter, yeah. Andrew. Look at yeah. you. I've been an early Andrew Wilson adopter. I was yep. on the Crucible. Now yeah. you've blown up. I was You're there on the when Crucible were... when we were at a thousand subscribers debating. I was there when debating. it was 42 yeah. people. I remember yeah. exactly. You know, yeah. but we broke 100, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I remember sometimes we started off 42 people. Now yeah. you have, have 3,000. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's Literally. and that's that's when there's nothing going on. That's what you I'm know? saying. <laughs> that's then what we've I'm got saying. something going on. It's you five, six K. Yeah. That's we do probably pretty like good. your average. I mean, yep. that's insane. The numbers. That's really strong. numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, it's numbers. really the crucible does uh, does very good. Uh, we if have you're getting five thousand live viewers on your show. That's insane. People don't realize how insane that even a it thousand is. is good. Don't yep. get me yeah. wrong. Wait till you 100 see it is really good. Two yeah. hundred. I'm not even don't even hate. I wouldn't stop making content. But. Five thousand is strong as yeah. shit. Yeah, and we uh, we do it we do it pretty regularly. The thing is, is uh, but, but you know, I'm a, I'm a very good entertainer, very skilled entertainer, and you know that this business is as much about entertainment as it is being a skilled debater. You mm -hmm. know, so but You're Alex, a good debater. You're a good debater. Yeah, so Alex, I really appreciate talking with you, man. It's nice to see you again. It is always good to catch up. Well, I'll catch up. I'll hit you up again, but we're going to link right. up. I'm going to bring it to Dallas. I want you to check out the blaze. Ron, I'll be out there. You're the man. I need to have you on my show too. Carlos, great to meet you guys. I got to go. Same here. I'm going to way, DC. I'll be in DC all week. And then Reno, Nevada. I'm speaking at UNR, University of Nevada, Reno. Uh, so I got a busy ass week. I'm also. sure you'll follow. crush it, man. Thank you. Thank you, you for will. doing it. Follow it's always I, entertaining. Alex, yeah. See you guys. Take it easy, Alex. Take care, man. So the guy that ran against uh, DeSantis is Gilliam. 
And I'm oh, sure that's it, Andrew Gilliam. And, 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 I'm, and I'm sure he has an OnlyFans account, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Hey, why not at this point? You know, join my Gilliam's OnlyFans. Join us Great for to the meet you. Fund. I barely lost to Ron DeSantis. It would be a hell of a selling point. You know. Great to meet you, Andrew. Oh, hey, Welcome it's nice to, the to show. nice to meet you too as well, Carlos. Uh, are you the gentleman who said your son converted over to orthodoxy? Dude, you are the center of almost every single conversation I have with my son. Really? <laughs> I, dude. So, you know, his name is Christopher, um, lives in New Jersey. Um, he's on the job, and he's also a member of one of the county SWAT teams, ex-Marine uh, scout sniper. Um, so well, I won't hold the fact that he's a Marine against him. <laughs> Tell him so, I called him a fucking window licker, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably watching now. <laughs> so he um, he saw a, a debate that y you and Rob had, and he went down a wormhole, and, dude, he just immersed himself with information loves to buy books and read and 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 just immerse himself uh and then i guess about a year ago he joined a orthodox church in wyckoff new jersey it's a greek orthodox church they he have lives, the best food <laughs> he he lives in in north Halden, new jersey so it's close <clears throat> um and he's going through the catechism right now and Two, three weeks ago, we were we were out to see him, and we went to our very first Orthodox service. And How did you was, like it? It, it? it was a lot of standing. Yeah. Um. How I but, mean, yeah, I mean, how dare you stand while you pray to God? Right? Right. I mean, that's, that's too much. To that's that's right. a lot to ask, you know. <laughs> um. But you know, it 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 only because you know a lot of other denominations don't have that um yeah. and that's because they're fun but, but they are yeah they are um some of the nicest people i've ever met very welcoming and um they're growing there's construction um and, and i knew that you would be interested in this there's construction all okay. over the church hang on hang on expanding. before you continue with your story okay somebody in my chat said Marines eat all the different kinds of crayons because they want to taste the colors. <laughs> <laughs> <That makes sense. laughs> anyway, go ahead, man. Go ahead. So there's a lot of construction at the church because they're exploding. And yeah. um, but I've never seen I've never seen him so excited about any single subject because he loves movies and is obviously in, in you know uh, on the job but he is just fascinated with everything you and jay dyer have to say uh well so dyer I, dyer's the 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 theologian you know i'm um right i am an orthodox christian but i you know i'm a political debater and I keep everything kind of within the realm of politics, uh, though religion does come up from time to time. And I end up eviscerating people on that as well. Uh, unlike uh, Dyer and many others, I don't I don't have a ministry, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. actually as I'm very surprised how many people move to orthodoxy from my content. But uh, nonetheless, I am um, I'm very pleased with that result. It's uh, it's incredible to me. Tell him I said uh, that I'm really glad that he found the path. It's very narrow. But it seems like once people speak, it's put on it, they never go off of it again. Oh, yeah. No, he loves the fact that it's narrow. He loves that, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we, we have a lot of fun. Um, you know, listen, I'm blessed, Andrew, because I get to talk to my kids every single day. And it's not a chore. Wait, that's a and blessing? It, it, <laughs> it is. It is. It, it's the proudest thing I've ever, you know, that, that, that I, I was telling the audience earlier this morning. I, it, it's the proudest thing that I have is the fact that my kids love me and, um, you know, they, they talk to me every day, you know. Um, so I, I, I love that. I love that he found something that, that he can chew on and uh, he says that he owes it all to you. Uh, he doesn't owe it all to me at all. Um, he would have found the path anyway, because if you knock, the door will be open to you. So right. he was looking anyway. He just probably happened to stumble across me anyhow. 
But if it hadn't been me, it would have been somebody else. But I'm very happy that his feet have been planted firmly on the path. I was very happy when mine were as well. So, yeah. Uh, But tell him, what's his uh, what's his name? Christopher Saldivia. Well, Christopher Saldivia. I'm glad that your feet found the path, and I'm glad that you watched Crucible content. From all of us here at the Crucible, to you and your family, sir, I hope that you continue with orthodoxy and, uh, you know, make it down that path. Thank you so much, Andrew. I think when you say that, like, you're not really, you know, talking about ministry on here, I think the reason that so many people would be converted to orthodoxy from that is... The one thing that comes across from your content is that you're having fun. And that's infectious. Yeah. People could tell when someone's a happy person. And people could tell when someone's lifestyle is leading to positive outcomes from them. You know, I talk to you a lot about this, Andrew. So many of these lefties we argue with are just, it oozes out of them that they're miserable pricks. And no matter what people might think of our political message or something like that, people can't help but tell that we're having fun. You know, that we love being parents. We love being husbands. No, no, no. The, my content is always super serious. There's no edge to it at all. I've never cracked a single joke, especially at the expense of a beautiful woman. I will never do anything like that. Always straight and narrow in my political takes, Rob. And I will not have any of your Coomer degenerate talk on this fine program. It's certainly Sick true. of it. It's ridiculous. I have been And actually... he definitely doesn't ignore people or laugh at them when they're ridiculous right. at no. all. No. What happens is I laugh at a thing a chatter says, and I have a hot mic moment, and suddenly I, it coincides with whatever ridiculous fucking thing the other person said, and somehow now I'm laughing at them. <laughs> and, you know, and I can't beat this rap no matter where I go. It's a couple of hot mic moments, you know, and, and suddenly it's like, oh, Andrew just laughs at lunatics on the internet all the time, and it's like, I don't do that. I'm laughing at a thing the chatter said, and by the way, anything that the chatter said was a nice, wholesome joke. Right. Very wholesome and uh, very funny because of how wholesome it was. That's what made me laugh. I just happened to be in a hot mic, and I just can't beat these raps. It's ridiculous. Well, listen, I feel now's the appropriate time to announce, much like our friend Connor. Just stop from... accusing me all the time, Rob. I'm sorry. Much like Why my just friend... stop with the accusatizations? <laughs> the accusatizations, <laughs> Rob. <laughs> Conservatives that are now paid by progressive victory to bring you down a peg. So they, I've sold out for a couple, uh, you know, a, a couple rubles as well, uh, so that I can come on the crucible and just bring you down a peg, uh, like all of my great, wonderful masters at progressive victory. <laughs> like my goodness, what? Well, what I have a, a debate. Shit... I have a debate with Connor tomorrow. Mm. Um, so I like be, Connor. If I'm this will be my last uh, my last debate, a Kamala versus uh, a Trump debate before the big election stream on the fifth. I hope you'll pop in for that stream. I'll be streaming all Absolutely. day and all night. Uh, one of the main reasons I wasn't going to stream today because I have such a long streaming day tomorrow between whatever and then uh, you know this debate. But Rob, I just couldn't leave you hanging Dang. on the twenty four hour yeah. live stream. So. Um, Listen, I was talking shit on you with Alex. I was like, when the fuck? Actually, it's 25 and a half hours because Daylight Savings is going to roll back. I was like, when's Andrew going to do a 26-hour stream? I want to see a 26-hour TikTok invasion. Your head will be oh, mushed with shit, these lefties dude. fucking for 26 hours. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If somebody sent me a Bitcoin over on the crucible.video, so if I wake up and there's a Bitcoin in there, I will do a 24-hour TikTok invasion. Oh, fuck. That would be some of the most amazing fun on planet. 24 hours of uh, TikTok invasion. It's the virtual beaches of Normandy that you'll be streaming doing that. Like, holy shit. Talk about wading into the past. I was telling Alex, I would love to set up like a virtual Jubilee that's debating 24 different people an hour apiece for 24 hours straight, one-on-one. Like, just bring them on one after next. What topics you want to debate? Let's go. Fuck it. Let's do it. I would love to do something like that, but the TikTok invasion is a different beast. <laughs> somebody That's said, I produce that for somebody, you. somebody said, okay, but well, here's the thing, right? That's my price because doing a 24 hour stream would be brutal, yeah. especially to keep it high energy for an entire TikTok invasion. But I would do it for the right price. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That's, That's how you raise, it's how you raise money for your show. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. that's it. Now I do this. The, the point of this stream was to drive people out to vote, particularly here in Pennsylvania. But I love doing these every two. Somebody years. call like, me a greedy old man. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, like, greedy old man. That's the point. <laughs> yeah. So 
no, it really like yeah, I think like gimmicks like that as well. Like it encourages people to participate to donate, and it also is like there's nothing better than a good fucking gimmick. You know, that, that's sort of what Jubilee has going for it. It's a nice gimmick. I don't. I've on. never felt like. Um... Like we were very big on gimmicks. The uh, the invasion. It is true that we have the feel with Starship Troopers and stuff like that because it's a lot. It adds to the fun. But we do have a very concise mission, which is to go on there and wreck these liberal oh, progressive yeah. scumbags who are all over TikTok, who essentially get to walk around unopposed all day long in their echo chambers, and we just kind of come in and ruin that for them. And it's a, not only a great amount of fun, but it has a very precise point, which is when these people are challenged, they fold like cheap chairs. Well, the gimmick part of it's the 24 hours. Like, but yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, it, it's amazing. By the way, like I saw one of the best the TikTok streamers have to offer is Dean Withers. I was watching live when he came on your show there a couple weeks ago, and he had a very cordial conversation sort of outlining this debate that you were going to do on what Dude, he, uh, wait a second. No, no, no. He fucking, he tried to sheave Palpatine me, okay? He came on to a TikTok stream during an invasion. And he did like a video message. He's like, Andrew Wilson, I know that you're watching this right now, right? Blah, 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 blah. He did a whole call out. And I was like, fine. We'll meet with the white flag, right? We'll we'll meet, we'll meet, we'll settle, we'll settle this, we'll get it all set up so that we can do an in-person debate. So he agrees, he comes on, we settle out all the details. He broke the agreement within 30 days. Yeah, it was pathetic, and I witnessed it. I witnessed it live. And again, you want being a prick? It was a very cordial conversation. He had some discussions. He wanted to debate the guy that runs whatever, and you were explaining he's not a professional debater, and you're like, why don't we do a one-on-one -on -one thing? Or, you know, if you're going to... He wanted some professional... By the way, by the, hang on, hang on. By the way, I just got to throw this out there. If somebody actually did donate a Bitcoin for 24-hour in a TikTok invasion, I would also give half of that to charity. That's all. Just so you know, I would give half of that to charity and I do direct charity. So it would be like paying six people's mortgage or something like that. So just so you know, um, yes, I am a greedy old man, I suppose, when I when I br bring out excellent entertainment. I know that people uh, don't mind funding that, uh, but I guess I'm just not quite that greedy. A couple of super chats real quick because I'm greedy. Stu K for two bucks says peanut, ri peanut or Ruby Ridge, which is worse. Ruby Ridge was just humans dying. Squirrels dying last forever. So I think the answer is evident. Mm -hmm. Crucible Ghost for $10 says the Crucible crews always show love. Shit. Shit. Yeah, totally, totally agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob, let's hear it. Okay, from both of you. Okay. Shit. Shit. From, from, yeah, from the wire, man. That's, that's good <laughs> stuff. As that series went on, the shits got longer, too. That's great. Uh, <laughs> right. Crucible Ghost for 5 bucks again says not one step back. Awesome. Thank you. And Christopher Scott doesn't leave a message. I always crib this from Andrew. Favorite type of donation, favorite type of message, $20. Thank you so much. She has but, absolutely nothing. Just wanted to show support for the streams. Very yeah, kind of him. Fantastic. So, yeah, I mean, I think you're doing great work. And I did. I saw Dean, like, he changed. The I will. I, I'll even buy a Marine a pack of crayons. <laughs> How much? I have no fucking clue. How much is a one Bitcoin worth at this point? I think $70,000. Oh, shit. 70, yeah. yeah. You can do yeah. 24 hours for that. <laughs> yeah, well, I would do I would do 24 hours and then I would give half of that to charity. It's awesome. No, it's it's yeah. fantastic. So, one of the things I think like I don't know how much of this I could say, but one of the things that's always impressed me with you is sort of your game planning for the future and what you want to see happen, not through, through your channel, but sort of the way you want to see culture and politics move in this country. I remember talking to you like a couple of years ago where you had the eye for strategy to see how insane some of this LGBT shit was going to get. Yep. And you were basically like, listen, man, no one's talking about this shit. My goal is I'll take the fucking libertarians. I'll take the paleocons. Yep. I'll take the neocons. I don't give a shit. Pushing back on this is the single biggest issue. And I think you've been so single. Effective. It was a single biggest issue of our time at that time yeah. was uh, was the agenda, which was being rolled out for the trans ideology. And I was way ahead of the curve on that, way ahead of the curve on birth rates, way ahead of the curve on all of this and forming a coalition in opposition. And I would like to take some credit, though I hate to do this. I have to. And in a way, uh, I'll, I'll take some credit that it was a lot of the arguments that I put out in the ethos against the transgender ideology that changed a lot of the way that people argued that issue. And I think that it did shift at least the online goalpost a bit. Now, people, will, I'm sure, will refute that because you don't want to give me credit for fucking anything. But definitely, I introduced arguments into the ethos that had not been heard before. 
Yeah, I mean, and I will admit, it's one of the issues that I was wrong on in that, you know, a lot of people like me that don't have as quite as conservative views as you on some of these social policies. I was like, ah, I like Andrew, and I agree that there's some sort of worry, but shit ain't going to get as radical as he's suggesting. Boy, yeah. was I fucking wrong. Yeah, boy, were you wrong. I, yeah, you took right. the L on that one yeah. for sure. Yeah, you know? Christopher said the same thing, by the way, Rob. Yeah. Uncle Rob. Yeah, yeah, it's it's <laughs> really is. It's, it's mind-blowing how fast. And, you know, when you know, it, it's difficult with terms of service and stuff. I won't use the exact words, but you can imagine where things go from here. Uh, you know, if if you could choose your sex, why can't you choose your age? And, you know, what's that mean, the logical extrapolation plan? That is where we're heading. Yeah. Uh, if, you know, and it, it's that's some scary shit. Uh, you know, we had some people on earlier that came. And it's going to get worse. Yeah. Listen, it's going to get worse because – because what's happened with this particular weirdo phase, this particular weirdo phase, it, you know, you have like Goss or they, that, that's a weirdo phase of American culture. This weirdo phase of American culture is now moving to the next weirdo phase. And what's coming that's worse than that? That's the question. <laughs> right. And since we had, we had uh, a couple people on that uh, were lived in Canada and moved to Mexico. And they were talking about how radical the Canadian government is. One of the things they said was they found this doctor that there's now reporting from conservative outlets up there, though it's very sparse. And this doctor was targeting kids in foster homes and they've targeted over 5,000 kids for trans drugs and trans surgery. Because what they realize is if you don't have parents there to sort of advocate for, it's easy to go into these vulnerable kids that are getting lost in the system and target them for this crazy batshit ideology. So, I mean, it just goes to show, like, they're not going to stop. Like, yeah. they're never going to stop until society just repudiates them in the strongest way possible. Well, and and the, the thing is, though, is that in some ways, the T ideology was one of the biggest blessings to the right wing and to Christianity. It was one of the most horrible things, but at the same time, one of the one of the greatest political blessings because it actually stalled that agenda out. Even people on their side were like, OK, wait, <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second here. This is, you know, you had radical feminists who were, you know, flipping on a dime, becoming uh, TERFs, right? The trans exclusionary radical feminist groups, which have become emergent in order to protect women's rights and to keep men out of their circles. Right. It actually threw into disarray the entire LGBTQ uh, flagship. And it was the first time that the agenda in my lifetime had stalled out. Now, it didn't stall out for long sure. before they started to get their shit together, but it did stall. And that was enough for uh, conservatives to kind of recover. And uh, and they've been able to kind of fight back against this plague a bit, though, though we're going to lose it like we do everything in culture. In many ways, uh, it backfires and moves people more towards, again, the more traditional outlook and. Uh, so, you know, kind of all evil God uses for good, as they say. Yeah. No, totally cool. Let me get some super chats. Alder Void for $5 says, Invasion is bug, boys. Can someone send a Bitcoin? Hashtag not Destiny Fund. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, too, that money will not go to the Destiny Bet Fund, I assure you. Uh, guy for two bucks says, Please speak louder, Rub. I just cut my ears off, did you? I saw you reviewed you reviewed that. I didn't. I, I wanted to let you know that when I was suggesting, like, dude, you got to see this. It was that ridiculous guy's fucking poem for his entry. The rest of the base just normal lefties that don't understand any argumentation or facts whatsoever. But man, that opening statement that guy had. Oh, I mean, you know, but you know me, I love debates, so yeah. I was going to watch more. I was like, well, where are we going to go from here? And then he just turned into it. He that dude had the worst voice. Wow. Listen, they Rob. cut their ears off yeah, and praise Rob. to the young Rob. man. The yeah. lollipop kingdom will uh, never, you'll never defeat dude. the lollipop kingdom, Rob. Never. I didn't yeah. notice until I went back and when you were watching it. You watch that dude's face when I start making fun of him as soon as oh, I yeah. come out. It hurt him. Like, he actually thought he was on to something. He thought people were going to go, oh, <laughs> shit. This, this. And, like, when I came out and just started beating some poetry. One of the things I love, though, like, it's so rare to hear someone I respect review a debate of mine. So I'm driving at work. You know, I work in home health care. I got a guy in a car and my buddy's like, Rob, is that you? Who's this guy? I'm like, ah, it's my boy, Andrew. So you're sitting there talking about me. It's amazing to me how many times you'd be like, well, here's what's going to happen with this argument. You know, Rob's talking about these crime statistics and they're looking at two different sets of data. And Rob's going to explain why his set of data is preferred. And then like, as soon as you start the video, it's like, that's immediately where I go. Yep. It's so interesting to see people that understand argumentation and where it's going. And you compare that to these like dumb shits on the left. That dude still has no clue what I was saying. And I'm trying to dumb it down for him. Like as stupidly as possible. Like we're looking at two competing sets. So which set 
If you're looking at two boards that you're going to, what type of lumber am I going to use to build this house? There are pros and cons. They can't understand it. They're so fucking. But Rob, he had the FBI statistics. That's all that matters. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's surreal. You know, no, um, Rob, stop, Rob. All you do, all you're doing is trying to erode faith in our institutions. Why did you cut your ears off? Can't Rob, you? all that matters is that you're trying to erode faith in our institutions by using alternative data sets, which have not been approved by some ne nebulous institution that I can't name that needs to approve them so that I know that they're credible, Rob. All you're trying to do is you're just trying to panic monger and make everybody believe that the FBI is not credible. That's all you're trying to do. Right? But this is the thing, right? It was very clear to me that you had a teammate who was not a skilled debater. Mm -hmm. And it was very clear to me that you were debating people who didn't even understand what the fuck you were talking about. They couldn't even engage with it. And so it was very easy for me to break that debate down because I've been in that position, I don't know, a hundred times. <laughs> yep. Right? So that dude, Josh Cedar, that was my partner, he got sent through Alex Stein. Modern day debates, like, I think you're blacklisted from there, right, after your Dillahoney debate. I was, <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting. James contacted me after seeing me discuss your debate, and I had mentioned I was blacklisted. He said, he DM'd me, he's like, nope, you're not blacklisted, and I don't hold grudges. And Listen, I was like, well, that's highly convenient, of course, now that uh, there's a huge audience I can bring over there. Because when I debate, I usually have about 5,000, 6,000 live. Anytime I do a debate, now suddenly you want to reach out. But I also am not going to hold grudges. I'm not going to do it. The space is too small, and there's too many people who I like to tangle with. So I'm not going to hold grudges either. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And let me let me say, like, I That doesn't I mean I have to be happy about that's it. That's right. I understand <laughs> modern-day debate sort of their position on the whole Dillahunty thing. But I reviewed that Dillahunty debate. And for anyone that hasn't seen that, they need to go back. Yeah, you look like a prick to the person outside, but you're making a point. You forced Dillahunty to literally collapse on his own argument like that. It's one of the most impressive things I've seen. Everyone wants to focus on like the, oh, well, was what Andrew said rude? Fuck all that. Dillahunty's being rude well before that and well after it. What There's this guy. <laughs> Bro, there's this guy. He's spurging out in my chat because I I uh, clowned uh, Marines, right? Uh, just 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 so that all the Spurgs know, nobody talks shit about Marines more than Marines. Nobody. Yeah. They pride yeah. themselves on it. It's one of their biggest pastimes is to laugh their ass off at each other. And you I don't know. Them but there's anything. always there's always yeah. a Spurg, right, who thinks that they're gonna whip up a frenzied offense mob. Right. How are you going to whip up an offended mob of Marines? You can't offend Marines. Yeah. Right. They're they're laughing their asses off. You stupid fuck. But anyway, go ahead, Rob. Yeah. Save your offense for yourself. Don't speak on others. Bad. But so, yeah, that did. Oh, I was going to finish Rob, that deal. Uh, go ahead, Carlos. It, tell me about this debate. Give me the, the 30 second overview of this debate. So I don't, I'm not a, I'm okay. not familiar with it. Dillahunty is an atheist. Right. And he's going to I forget the exact term he uses, but he has this sort of ethical worldview. Do you remember what he called it? Like the, secular humanism, secular humanism. Right. So okay. that's what he's going to. And it, the debate, it, I don't understand how he doesn't know this. The debate quite clearly is going to come down to a question of, well, where do you get your ethics? Where do you get your sense of morality? And so right. Andrew is correctly pointing that out. And one of the things that Dillahunty says, who's this big time, like, you know, atheist, secular humanist, supposed to be a big man in the debate sphere. So they're in person doing this debate. And Dillahunty makes this argument where he's like, well, you know, where we get ourselves, it's through rational debate. And in the system I'm advocating, we'll get a system of morality because when questions occur, then we'll have rational people be able to discuss these issues and we'll be able to come to the best conclusion. And Andrew basically makes the point like, you know, your husband's or <laughs> your wife or husband or whatever is a man. Right, because he is a trans husband or boyfriend or whatever the fuck it is, and he okay. loses his shit and like storms out. And it's like you know, ah, blah blah blah, and starts screaming at Andrew. Literally, who's been he's been paid to appear here. This is a debate that's being put online that hosts have set up to be paid. And this dude who just got telling you that his entire worldview is that we could get a sense of morality by two people having a rational debate, literally loses his shit at the first mention of, dude, you think men could be women? And he's just like, that's beyond the pale, blah, blah, blah. Thus proving his entire worldview is fallacious. Because when pressed in the slightest possible way, he proved that, no, you are incapable of having rational debate. Instead, and you Andrew's are an emotional the first mess. person to point this out to him? Yes. It, it was surreal. And everyone's focused because, on this. Because I need you to understand why, though, Carlos, just so you understand. Uh, Christian apologists are notoriously terrible 
at debating politics and political debaters are notoriously terrible at debating apologetics. I exist somewhere between these two worlds, mostly on the political yeah. side, but I do at least dabble a bit in apologetics here and there because I'm forced to in order to defend my worldview on politics. Right. So the thing is, is that I'm happy to take those types of debates on because this was a mixture of the political and um, the idea of defending the worldview of Christianity versus secularism as well. So as we dive into this, uh, you need to understand that most Christian apologists are actually sissies and they refuse to give any sort of condemnation, thinking that they can win the other side over through niceness nice. yep. while the other side completely decimates everything they love, care about, destroys every symbol that they care about, destroys the very life that they want to try to leave. And they think that being nice is going to solve that. And so they're treated notoriously like dog shit and treated <coughs> horribly. And they just kind of take it. And it's like, you don't actually have to do that. You don't actually have to take any shit from no. this little little fat bald gay dude. You don't have yeah, to take his shit. There's and no high road. That's right. And he's gonna and, and he's just everything that he's bitching about Andrew about, he literally did in his opening statement. For example, he's saying, Well, we're only gonna talk like in the abstract. We're not gonna talk about individuals or people's individual personalities. And yet he spent his entire opening statement talking about something that like Dan Crenshaw or Mike Johnson. Yeah, said. yeah. He spent the entire opening statement bringing up that, 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 Andrew, to do that it's due to Christianity that LGBTQ is discriminated against. So I brought up, well, it's due to secular humanism. That, so he's saying Christianity comes to absurd moral conclusions. My criticism back is no, actually secularism comes to absurd moral conclusions. And here's why we know this, because you can't even tell that you're dating a man. Right. And, it, so, and, it's, it's, and why would this oh yeah, be something that he would get him? It's, you know, and obviously it gets a little, Matt then takes the opportunity or Dylan, whatever the hell he takes the opportunity to raise the temperature and be a prick and start yelling. And people in the audience are, you know, clutching their pearls and getting offended. But what that, what they're doing, bodies all of them too. <laughs> yes. Right. And what they're doing is they overlooked the like sheer brilliance of performatively, without saying a word, Andrew didn't have to say a word after that, the actions that Dillahunty did when pressed in the slightest way performatively destroyed his entire argument. And I think 90% of the people in that crowd were Dillahunty fans. None of them got it. None of them got like, you nope. dumb shit. You know, it was like the other day I had Hutch call in. I'm doing this stream and I'm talking about these Gold Star families. There was this big story a month ago about Trump disrespected Arlington Cemetery and blah, 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 blah. So the Gold Star families that invited him there came out and was like, basically, keep our family's name out of your mouth. He actually respected our families. He came there at our request. Kamala Harris and Joe Biden won't even talk to us. They don't respect Gold Star families. So once more, the Democrats are taking an issue that they're weak on and trying to go on offense by saying Trump doesn't respect Gold Star because he was in Arlington. So I'm playing through the comments of like eight of these Gold Star families that put messages up on X. And Hutch wants, the streamer Hutch wants to call in, who I've also seen Andrew destroy at a time. Uh, he wants to oh, call Oh, no, in. I drug him for four hours straight because what? of how Is bad that? faith he was to Rob. What happened with Hutch? I watched, I was so enraged by this debate because Rob came on and I did a review of it. And I was like, this is a trap. These, these, this, yeah. this fucker saying he wants to have a conversation. This is not a conversation. This is trying to lead him into a debate trap. And people who are notoriously bad at debate do this often. I don't want to have an adversarial conver or debate. I just want a conversation. He told me that he wanted to talk about my appearance on Tim Pool. That's what. So, uh, so I yeah. was on Tim Pool. I didn't know who Hutch was. So I thought, oh, it was just a guy that wants to be like, hey, what was it like being on Tim Pool? It's fine. I debated him and I did fine. But he was, yeah, that's certainly what was going on. It was an attempted. Yeah. Chance. So that so that pissed me off because I've been wise to this tactic by the left forever. They do. They have attempted to do it to me forever. So Hutch is like, I'd like to have a good faith conversation with you. And I said, well, sure, Hutch. So he came on and I was like, well, just so you know. I'm just going to go ahead and dispense with the pleasantries. And uh, since this is obviously actually a debate disguised as a conversation, I'm just going to dive right into why you're wrong about everything on plan. Just drug him for hours till he actually begged to leave. He's like, I just want to leave. Can I just leave? And I was like, nope. We're not done yet, Hutch. <laughs> right? He's so unimpressive. It's a mark. So he calls into this stream, right? right where I'm right. literally playing the comments of these Gold Star families. My entire argument is the Democrats making this a political issue don't give a shit about Gold Star families. Hutch calls in. I'm like, hey, man, I got 15 minutes. I'm supposed to be doing an interview with another stream. What do you got? And he's like, well, I want to talk about this Arlington story. And I was like, do you give a shit about Gold Star families? Sure. I'm like, did you in any of the content where you stream almost daily, did you mention what these actual families have said? 
Have you listened to them? Have you yourself listened to them? He's like, nah, I haven't done that. So we go back and forth for a second. It's starting to get a little heated. And I'm like, well, you just admit that you don't give a fuck about what these families think and you're just using it for political rhetoric. And he literally says to me, I'll admit whatever you want as long as we can talk about what I want. Performatively, he has just proven my entire argument that people are claiming to give a shit about these families, but they don't give a shit. They're just using it to say, look, Trump, bad man. And so when he comes on to discuss it, he says, I'll say whatever the fuck you want to not talk about what these gold star families are talking about. And then he whines like a bitch where I get a little heated, which, by the way, he deserves after the way he treated now, me. Rob, the first time. I'm, I got I got to go a little early tonight. I got to no get some sleep this evening because I have a really long streaming schedule tomorrow. Um, and I just, I gotta get, I gotta make sure I get plenty of rest for it. Uh, but I, I didn't want to leave you hanging. Mr. E shut up the raid over to Mr. Nor, uh, and crucible crew, keep him company this fine evening as he goes through his 24 hour live stream and make sure that you donate heavily. He's got a little son at home, right? This guy works his ass off. He's working 70, 80 hours, weeks. It's insane. I talk to him all the time. He's off in street. Uh, well, it's just insane. His schedule's insane. I would most certainly appreciate it. I'm going to jump out of here, Rob. Uh, Jake Rattlesnake, if you know who he is, I would definitely have him on this evening. He's on Australia time. He is the king of Australia. So. He asked me. He, I'm going to do his show in a couple of days, but I'll message him right now. I was just talking yeah, to him. Yeah, see, um, see if he'll pop on. Uh, as the king of Australia, it's necessary that he come on the Rob Nor show so that he can be vetted for proper conservatism. <laughs> also, I hear Nor's how you say no in Australia. So yeah, near yeah. Nar. Nar. They say Nar. Let, let me say, like, always appreciate it, man. You're one of my favorite people to talk to. I know we're going to be working on some things soon. So much appreciated. Thanks for coming on tonight. And uh, can't wait to talk to you here after the election. Hopefully you owe some money because Trump wins. Uh, yeah. I hope. I Well, I mean, it'll be the best $2,000 I ever spent. Thanks a yeah. bunch, Rob. You Thank have a great you. night. Thank you. So I'm going to get to Thank some you, soup. Andrew.